July 2nd, 2018. Uh, item number one, prayer by Councillor Denny. All, all please rise. Uh, instead of a prayer, I have uh, a few things. I like a moment, uh, do a moment of silence. Uh, since 1776, 243 years in our history, a uh, moment of silence is for all those who've served and sacrificed for all of us. And for those who are still serving and still sacrificing for us, happy 4th of July. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Councillor Denny. Here. Councillor Fall. Here. Mayor Ludwig. Here. Councillor Muller. Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. Councillor Ungeyer. Here. Councillor Arnoni. Here. Councillor Bosco. Here. Councillor Sakala. Councillor Crisati. Here. Councillor Davis. Here. There's 10 members present. One is absent. Item number four, the fire evacuation. If in case of a fire, we have doors directly behind a building, please exit orderly to the left or to the right, out the doors, or we also have exit doors to our left and your right. Please go out the door. They'll be the first doors on the left. Go down the stairs, hook around the staircase, and go out the doors. Uh, item number five, me, uh, the meeting of proceeding minutes. Do I have a motion to approve a special meeting June 18, 2018? So moved. Councilor second. Falk, seconded by Councilor Arnone. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none by a show of hands, all those in favor? Those opposed, any abstentions? 10 in favor, zero against. Do I have a motion to approve the special joint meeting on June 18, 2018? So by Councillor Denny, seconded by Councillor Muller. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none by a show of hands, all those in favor? Those opposed, any abstentions? 10 in favor, zero against. And do I have a motion to approve the regular meeting of June 18, 2018? So by Councillor Falk, seconded by Councillor Corsati. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none by a show of hands, all those in favor? Those opposed, any abstentions? We have 10 in favor, zero against. Item number six, moving right along. Special guests, and we have um, first up, Department of Corruption, Corrections, Commissioner Scott Semple. Mr. Mayor, we'll ask the commissioner to come up, and I'll, I'm, I just would like to say a few words as he uh, seats himself. Uh, a couple of meetings back, the council had asked, they had questions, because obviously we have correction facilities in Enfield, and there are always concerns about changes there and what the future intentions are. So the council had asked that we reach out to the Department of Corrections to ask if they could send a representative to come speak to us. So we called the commissioner's office to ask if he could perhaps send a representative. And to my surprise, about 10 minutes later, the commissioner called me and said I'd be more than happy to come. Uh, in reviewing the commissioner's uh, storied career of over 30 years with the Department of Corrections, it doesn't surprise me that that's the approach he takes. He is a unique individual who started with the Department of Corrections in 1988 as a line officer at a really high-risk institution in Connecticut. He worked his way up. He has been an instructor. He has been a training officer. He has been the uh, press person for the department. He worked his way up to be captain, then a major. He then moved on to become a deputy warden due to his innovative programs and insightfulness into the department. He was recognized for that. He became a warden at one of the top facilities. He was then appointed as an uh, acting deputy commissioner, then interim commissioner, and then in 2015, by unanimous consent of the Senate in uh, Hartford, he was made commissioner. His focus has not been just to do the same old thing. I, I look at the opioid crisis, and I, I look to people uh, like the commissioner, and innovative ideas, that's what's going to lead us out of these problems. He, after touring uh, Germany with Governor Malloy in 2015, saw a different approach to corrections in that country, which he brought back to Connecticut. He opened the first um, facility that focused on reducing recidivism and reintegrating uh, male prisoners back into society. It was with great success he did that in 2015. He has since opened three others, one for veterans, one for those who are incarcerated for drunk driving uh, convictions, and those for women prisoners. It has been recognized nationally as the best practices in a uh, corrections uh, department. He is also on our uh, law revision uh, commission appointed by the governor, so he has input and is on the cutting edge of criminal justice reforms in Connecticut to try to address all of the problems that plague us. So I am quite happy and honored, and I think we all should be privileged to have the commissioner here 
to answer questions uh, of the council. I'll also say when he was major, he was also the legislative liaison to the legislature. So he's had good practice in dealing with councils and legislatures, so he should be well prepared for your questions. Commissioner, thank you for coming. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Welcome, Commissioner. Welcome. Well, thank you for the kind words, and uh, I, I would like to say that my predecessor, Leo Arnone, is the one who showed me the way, and I see Mr. Tom Arnone's here. Uh, please extend a uh, happy birthday I, to I your brother. I just did, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure to be before you. I, I'm prepared to answer any questions that you may. So, did, I don't know if we forwarded We did. We forwarded some of the questions that the council had. Many of them were similar in nature, but I asked the commissioner. He said he's more than happy to jump right into it. I don't know it. if you want to just address the questions that were sent to you before we open up, or do you want us to just ask direct questions? Uh, whatever, whatever I will try to uh, remember uh, the details of the so, question. So, if you want, I'll just reiterate, because I, I was sent the questions. At least the one for me that's most important is what's going to happen with the prison that currently is being, uh, you know, renovated, where, you know, the prisoners no longer there, which for us as a town is affected, as you know, our flow into the water pollution plant, which again limits the state's liability when it comes to help funding the uh, the capital improvements on that pro. And you can imagine we just went through an increase. We have a lot of folks in the audience here who are not happy about their tax bills. So for me, I want, I've heard different stories. I'm not putting you on a spot, but it, I've heard that there's going to be prisoners sent back there. If that's the case, we're under collecting revenue from the state because that flow is going to increase. And if, and again, the general question, if you're renovating a building and you're not going to bring prisoners back, then why are you renovating a building? So that's just for me, and I don't want to speak for anyone else. Okay. So I, maybe I'll tip that off to you. Sorry to put you on the spot. Is that microphone on, Commissioner, the red button? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for the softball. <laughs> I figured I'd just get right to it. Um, so the, what we're speaking to is the Enfield Correctional Institution, right. and I, uh, it was a facility that uh, I believe was uh, built in 1962, and we, and we closed it recently. Uh, the result of the closure uh, was a decision made uh, based on the population trends that are impacting the agency as a whole. Uh, in essence, uh, what the agency is experiencing now is a significant decrease in the overpopulation and, and the overall population. In 2007, the population was uh, almost uh, at the 20,000 mark and now is at about 13,400 and change and forecasted to go lower. Uh, the, part of the reason for that is uh, in the uh, early 90s and late 90s, uh, there was the thought process, uh, truth and sentencing, mass incarceration, hyper-incarceration, different terminology is used, and the thought process was to uh, lock, up, lock them up and throw away the key to deal with the crack cocaine issues that were in, impacting our country. In essence, uh, those people are aging out, and more than 40 percent of the overall population are in their 40s. So at least half of that population will be returning into our community. So you're gradually seeing a trend downward. In addition to that, we're seeing less youth come into the system. So there's a culmination of those two factors, coupled with a modest uh, reduction um, in overall recidivism that has led to a continued decline in the overall incarceration. Now, I mentioned that we have 13,400 and change. The facility in question uh, um, held a population of uh, roughly 700. And uh, the decision to close that particular site was based on a number of reasons. One was its proximity to the other locations around that particular facility and wanted to be cognizant of movement of staff that would be relocated to other locations. Many of the staff, as you know, uh, reside here in the town of Enfield and surrounding towns. Um, we are maintaining the integrity of the building uh, for the purposes of um, potentially, we have a new, new administration that will be coming on board. That I don't know what their philosophy will be on criminal justice matters. We could see a rise in the population, and I want to maintain that infrastructure in the event we will continue to, to need it. So we are doing some minor um, uh, upgrades to that particular facility, particular to the roof. Uh, which is, uh, quite frankly, should be replaced in totality, but we're doing patchwork. We, there is no one housed at that particular facility right now. The building is vacant, but we are maintaining the integrity of the infrastructure. There is no uh, uh, indication that uh, we will be doing anything other than that at this juncture. 
Um, as far as the, uh, the the sewage, was it sewage? Uh, well, we call it the water pollution plant. The water pollution yeah, the flow, plant. So the flow from the prison obviously is down, yep. which lowers your, this, or not you, or the state of Connecticut. Yep liability which obviously affects us as we've just passed an increase mm -hmm. so if we so and again i'm not you appreciate your answer if prisoners go back in there and now the flow goes back up and we just under collected a million dollars you can see what's and I'm, i know this is probably before your time but back in the 90s we had similar issues with the pilot money which we got again as a community really didn't get the money we deserved at the time when it came to the pilot settlement with the prisons so i'm just concerned as we just passed an increase and i'm not putting it on you but i like just a commitment that you'd be willing to work with us if the flow goes up and we're under collecting that we can come back to the state and have an adult conversation and say look your reimbursement was based on this flow that was before the 700 now we got the 700 back or whatever it may be and now the flow is increased you can see why, as as a mayor or even as a council person, that I want a commitment from the state that we're going to have an adult conversation that we can get some money that some of that infrastructure back because obviously that flow and affects the water pollution plant, which now we're charging, of course, to our residents. So, I, in, in in a nutshell, you know, that's basically my major concern. Right. So, you know, you, know, you have my commitment so. that we would will work with you uh, in the event that any issues come up. Uh, with regard to uh, what you're referring to. Um, I will say that uh, probably the, the uh, and I'm just making a recommendation, I'm open to your suggestions. Uh, if you were to send me a formal letter of concern, uh, that would uh, give me an opportunity to have my legal team take a look at it so we can give you an appropriate response uh, in addition to understanding the dynamics of how that uh, flow is metered and uh, because we have different facilities around the state some meters right. belong to the city or town some meters uh, belong to the state so i would really need to dive into that so we have a good grasp my recommendation is that we come to some understanding of of uh you know appropriate meter readings in advance of a potential problem exactly i, I agree with you 100 and i appreciate that answer i agree with you and, I, and we can get a formal letter and sorry, Council, yeah. Councilor Known. So it's metered by gallon. And when we changed over from, uh, uh, you know, it, it being in our taxes to having a fee for per gallon, uh, you ended up being our biggest customer. So, you know, over the last uh, several years, uh, you know, you have, uh, since we have gone to this, paid us uh, incredible amounts of money, which, um, is good because it's by the gallon. It's not good that new prisoners come in, the rate goes up because we get more flow. So that's basically how it works. We have a flow meter. Uh, the flow meter reports to us. We bill you just like everybody gets billed in the audience here, except you're getting at the commercial rate. So you're paying the full commercial rate, which I thought was one of the um, things that kept the sewer plant above water when we made this change to a fee payer. Because at the time, you were just paying the small, uh, the, the corrections were paying a small amount on flow. It was an adjusted fee. Now it's, you're, you're paying the real deal. You're, you're like I said, you're, uh, we have to switch hats to water pollution control because we are the commission too. So we have a two, two jobs here. So I'm speaking too as a commissioner that, um, you know, you went, you know, they were talking, you know, $80,000 a month, uh, um, in, in real money today that you're giving the water pollution control. So I think that's a fantastic deal that we have going right now because you're paying just like McDonald's or any corporation in our, in our town. And, and we appreciate that because the money's there. There is another twist to this too, which was helping us in our upgrades, which um, I thought was one of the issues I think that needs to be spelled out in that letter too, that one, you're paying by the gallon and two, there was a, um, I'm not sure what the agreement was, or even if there was an agreement that now we're doing a $35 million upgrade to our sewer plant, that you would take a portion of that for a, 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 a use of the plant. Um, so that's another issue that, that's separate and above what you pay per gallon. Because I think what you pay per gallon right. now is fair and reasonable. And uh, if, if you put more people in a prison, which I hope we don't have to do, but we're going to get paid for it anyway by the gallon. So your, your rate will go up. I think the issue here is where we're going with our upgrade. And, and if we can get some money f to help us with that upgrade. Yeah. That make a little, a little clearer? Any, yeah. Uh, I, um, 
I, I'm going to put. Uh, I don't uh, want to put I'm you on the put spot. I'm going to put engineering because, on my yeah, biography to, too, as well. But I'm, yeah, I, I don't understand the the. Right. Uh, no worry, the, I agree. All of the logistics of uh, how the process works, and I appreciate your knowledge of it. And, uh, that being said, uh, I think what's the most important is that we're willing to work with you. Right. In addition to that, uh, you know, we want to be good neighbors, and and we've had good rapport and relationships for a long, long time. And agree. We appreciate you coming here too. I mean, so that's yeah. just you coming here. I mean, because I know we had talked about this in the winter when we were, as you can imagine, we're putting the rates together, and a big piece of that rate was what Councilor Anon said is that that upgraded the state, and we're we're guesstimating on a number that, and we're telling people we're going to be break even in a year from now, and if we're a million short, I can tell you what I'd be saying as if I was a taxpayer of this town, which I am, and I know what I would be saying. So I think that's why I appreciate the fact that you've come here. And that's kind of the issue that we're concerned with, at least for me personally. I don't want to speak for anyone else, but I understand. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, just just one more thing. And, and since I have the numbers in front of me, uh, for 2017, the, the prisons paid nine hundred ninety thousand dollars to our sewer plant. So, um, again, that's that's better than pilot money because it comes by gallon, and there's there's no pilot money involved. It's it's good set fee every year. It's it's down quite considerable from the 1.2 million we're paying in the beginning of this. So um, again, um, you're you're a, a valued customer, uh, and un unfortunately, if you do get more prisoners, we get more fee. Understood. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Actually, we have had an opportunity. Lori, Peter, and I went over and did tour at the, the prisons out there and uh, that there are some excellent programs going on and there you can sense when you're there that there's a commitment to success in rehabilitation. The, um, their um, association with us, Nuntuk Community College yeah. is um, a very good program that you have up there. I, I would like to, um if I can make a few remarks. Well, actually, uh, yeah, there's another couple other positive programs that are yeah. going on in town. Feel free. Again, we, uh, it's not just about the flows. We want to give you the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's some good things going on in town. Sure. Yes. Um, well, Connecticut is very fortunate. It was chosen as an experimental site for the Pell Grant. And some people were questioning why, why Pell Grants for incarcerated people. Just historically, so you have an understanding. The application of parole grants was in place in the 80s and 90s, and then it was uh, removed under a different administration and re-implemented under the Obama administration and has been maintained under the Trump uh, administration. What we did, and uh, specific to this region and Enfield in particular, is we um, we reached out to Asnuntuck Community College with their manufacturing program, and we, we, we uh, created a collaboration that uh, is unique in perspective. Uh, you talked earlier about the establishment of the reintegration units. Whereas the inmate population are getting close to being re-released back into the community, uh, in essence, uh, re um, turned from uh, incarcerated person to student uh, at least three times a week where they go over to Isnantuk, uh, uh College under supervision and they go through the manufacturing certification program. These are on the second class. I'm trying to give kudos to this Nuntuck because I'm really impressed with their willingness to work with us. Um, the first class graduated, and 100% of those folks are law-abiding, tax-paying citizens today. The next class uh, recently graduated, and they'll be employed as well. And so we hope to continue uh, that momentum uh, in that regard because it just it makes our sa uh, community safer, as you know. And I don't know if you want to comment on the CHR program, uh, if you're aware of some of the, I mean, that's a very innovative program through the prison that we run through in town. Uh, the, know if you know, I don't want to put you in a spot, but I know that's another positive program. Uh, what, just town. tell me what it's an acronym for and I'll know what uh, it is. What's CHR, one of you guys who are? Uh, community Health Resource. Community Health Resource Company on Hazard Ave that does some of the, some of the yes. health folks who are, you know, unfortunately dealing with some tough issues when it comes to you know, drugs and stuff. Right. So uh, we've implemented uh, um, uh, programs to try to be uh, responsive to the uh, opioid crisis. And last year in Connecticut, over 900 people died of uh, opioid um, overdose, mostly attributed to the use of fentanyl. And uh, more than 60% of those people who have passed uh, were at one time incarcerated by the Department of Corrections. So 
For a number of years, we have been uh, working and establishing a medication-assisted therapy program. It's a community standard of care uh, that we wanted to implement into the correctional system, and we have done that up here in this uh, region. We call it a pilot program, but it's at four locations around the state, and we're seeing good outcomes from it. Anyone have any other questions for the commissioner? You wanted to ask me about the escape, too. I was, was, I was going to, you already, I put you in a spot one, but if you don't want to talk about it, I'm okay with it. But no, uh, all we're asking is continue to, as you, I know you do, work very closely with our police. And I know well, you do. I know your folks do. But. Yeah. I just want you to know that uh, it, well, it happened. It's still a matter that's under investigation. It was recently turned back to, over to us from the Connecticut State Police. It was a dual investigation. And uh, when, when the rubber meets the road, uh, it, there's issues of, there are certainly some issues of complacency that have to be dealt with, but there is also some issues of breakdown of security protocol that are embedded into how we operate. We have reinforced some of the security aspects of Carl Robinson because of the circumstances that occurred. But it really was an outlier situation because the offender who had uh, escaped from custody was going to be released in two months. I know, it's strange. And, and now will be sentenced uh, probably for a number of years as a result of uh, his uh, poor decision. Um, and I would like to say, since I'm here in Enfield, that you made a wise choice uh, hiring Chief Fox. I know him very well, and uh, he's a very reputable, honorable man. Very nice. Anyone else? Again, you're welcome here anytime. Uh, we will I live in Litchfield County, and I got to catch a flight. All right. Well, we we'll get you the for, we'll get you the formal letter, and uh, but again, we appreciate you coming here. This is important, not only but again, if there's programs that they're running through the prison that are again Bennett partnership in town, we'd love to be able to you know to explain it to people on TV, and so you're welcome at any time. But again, we I, I feel I appreciate the fact that you're willing to come here, because we've been asking for this really for a number of months to kind of talk through this because. Again, it's a big deal to us, obviously, and, and obviously it's a big deal to you because it's a partnership, so we appreciate you willing to come here. I will come uh, anytime you, you uh, would like to have me here. Okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, uh, Jason Neely and uh, I'm sorry. Mary. Mary. Sorry, Mary. Mary Keller. Mary Keller. Mary She, her name wasn't on my list, so I was guessing. I'll give a little overview, Mr. Mayor. Go right ahead. Um, we, we know there basically have been changes that we had posted in advance, in particular to the Senior Center. Mary and Jason um, are responsible as of July 1st for running that uh, facility. And I recognized and had heard from many residents, we've talked to several, their concerns about the hours and, and the programming and other matters that are, are affecting them. So I thought it prudent to bring Jason and Mary uh, to make some comments to tell us where they're at. So hopefully folks would have a lot of their questions answered and then uh, they could elaborate if they choose to come up and speak. But I will tell you, a lot of the things the council had put in place with the last budget obviously were implemented July 1st. Jason and Mary uh, have been very enthusiastic about reaching out and going there and continuing the great service that the Senior Center has known for decades. I will just tell you that at the last meeting, you authorized a new job description for a Senior Center director, and that has been advertised, so we are looking for that person. We had also talked about restoring some programs there, but within the confines of our facilities, um, schedules and our policies of the town to that end on tonight for your consideration is a renewal of bringing a nail person back who had been there for many many decades but also has agreed to sign a contract addressing liability and insurance pursuant to town policy that is how we intend to do this moving forward to bring back services but to do it within the parameters so we know that everybody is safe and that there's consistency across the board i will tell you and i don't want to take away their thunder but Mary had the same situation when she came to recreation several decades ago. She was charged with coming in and making all kinds of changes, and there was a great, there was resistance, there was doubt, there was frustration, and she asked people, give me some time, let me get to know the employees, let me get to know the programs, and then we'll revisit it. We'll look back and see if things should be adjusted. Jason has said that he and I went out there um, to the center. We intend on going back as needed. 
as the commissioner said, we'd like to come back. But I will just ask you for patience and understanding. I know that we're the land of steady habits and we become accustomed to programs and to schedules and change is difficult for anyone. But especially when you have a, you know, a, a, a comfort level at the senior center and you loved it, when you see any changes, they're met with resistance and I understand that. What I promised when we went out and we'll promise tonight, we'll always be honest, we'll be respectful, and we will try to communicate with you um, on the issues. They're gonna look at this over the next several months Months. We're going to get your feedback, and if changes can be made, they're amenable and open and flexible to doing that. So I'm glad you're here so we can hear your concerns, but I would just ask, give them some time to get to know you and the, and the uh, facility and our employees, and through their feedback, we'll come back and we'll address any of your concerns as we go forward. But thank you for coming this evening. I know it's a hot, hot night. You could have been doing uh, something else, maybe be in the pool or under the shade. Uh, so we appreciate you coming out uh, and voicing your opinion for the council. And with that... I'll ask Jason and Mary to speak. That's, that's two great intros in a row, so welcome. welcome. Well, when you have great people to introduce, <laughs> it's easy. Is, is the mic on? Can you guys hear me? Uh, is it not red? red. Okay, oh, there here you go. All right, is that better? Yep. There we go. Okay. So, you know, to what, to what Chris was saying, um, communication, I think, is one of the key things moving forward. Name and title, sorry. I'm sorry? Name and title. Oh, record. name and title. Uh, yeah. Jason Neely, library Thank director. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and, you know, the experience of going out with Chris to, to meet the folks at the Senior Center was kind of an impromptu meeting. We were expecting more of a meet and greet, but, um, you know, folks really turned out to let us know, you know, what their concerns were. And that's the kind of thing that we need to continue going forward. Um, over the last week, I've certainly heard from a lot of folks in the community about their concerns with the change in hours. Um, and that's something that Mary and I are going to look at in the, you know, like, like Chris said, the coming months to see what we can do while living within the budget. You know, right now we are down one staff person, as uh, Chris had mentioned last week, you approved the senior center manager position. So we're going to start actively looking for that and try to get that filled as soon as possible. And at that point, we will then be fully staffed again. It is one full time person less than where we were, but I think we're going to be able to, to, to look at what we have and see what we can do with, with the hours, possibly staggering some shifts. Um, a lot of the concerns that I've heard over the last week, you know, obviously the hours, the programming, um, in losing three out of the four nights that we had been open, a number of fitness classes have had to be canceled or staggered into one evening, which is obviously not ideal for a lot of people. So that's one of the things we're gonna have to take a look at. Uh, another concern that I've heard often is the staffing in the fitness center itself. Um, we're currently down one person there. There has been someone that's been out on medical leave, uh, as well as uh, with the budget cut, someone was let go there. So we're gonna look at how we can best maximize the hours that we have someone in that fitness center. Cause I think it's really important to have someone there to, to help folks out with the, their, their workouts and understanding machines. So we're going to be, you know, taking a look at how we can increase the services from what we've got. Um, it's going to be a challenge for sure. I think the Saturday hours are something exciting. Um, some of the feedback I've gotten, folks aren't really sure about how that's going to look. So if it's not something that's going to be well utilized, I think that we should probably look at moving those hours back into an ev evening slot. Um, that said, hopefully we have a ton of people coming in on Saturday and using the fitness center. Um, having the fitness center staffed on Saturdays is gonna be one of our priorities going forward so that there is a reason that we're there. People can stagger their workouts over a number of days. Um, I mentioned the senior center uh, manager. Uh, the the pedicare is something that we've heard a lot about, the, uh, the, the um, nail service that has taken place there for a long time. Uh, we're working with um, Pedicare and hopefully with the contract that you'll see tonight, it's going to make sense. And you know, conceivably within the next couple of weeks, we could have them back in there and and help helping folks out with that. Um, I've met with the friends um, a couple of weeks back, and the other thing that we're working on is a memorandum of, mem <coughs> memorandum of understanding so that we can really better define the relationship between the friends of the senior center and the senior center itself. And we're also going to look at the same thing for the, uh, the library. We've had a really good relationship with the friends of the library. Um, and really, I use that as a model for this, this memo, memo of understanding. Um, and I think that'll help clear up some of the, the confusion that has taken place in the past. Um, do you have anything you want to 
ad Maryland? No, I think that that was consistent with uh, former manager Brian Tchaikovsky's initiatives, and we've seen it. He wanted to codify things into policy so that whether it was a new manager or a different director, people would understand the relationships and the responsibilities between the parties. He did it in town government. Uh, I did it this morning with the resident in regard to whether we use a flagman or a police officer on public or private jobs, and that was new as of January. And, of course, the resident came in and wasn't happy with it, but that was part of an overall town process, and that's what Brian, I, I think, was attempting to do here. So we're working with the legal department to work and look at these agreements to make sure they, they protect uh, the town, but also offer the services to the seniors and we know who's there and under what circumstances and make sure that safety uh, and consideration is protected. So we're doing that across the board. Mary? Oh. Did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, just that uh, from the uh, recreation span standpoint, recreation is um, very excited to work with the library and with the senior center. It gives us something new, um, new population, new uh, programming. And I think, as Chris alluded to, I have done this actually twice before, so I'm interested in hearing what people have to say. I came into this process a little bit later than Jason did, so I haven't had the time to get up to speed as um, as in depth as I'd like at this point. But we started with a meeting this morning with staff over there. Um, I've already scheduled time um, to work with them this week, and I will be splitting my time between the Senior Center and the Recreation Department to um, you know, balance that workload. And we will do our best to try to give them the programs that they want staying within the budget that has been adopted and that we've agreed to. Do you guys have any, any questions for Jason or Mary, uh, Councilor Nolan and Councilor Falk? So um, as to what people want in surveys, and now it can go across the board right through recreation department, library. This is another great thing of, the, of putting the whole recreation and library and, and uh, senior center together is we don't not only duplicate services but we can also enhance services because your some of your services can uh, bleed over so I, I don't think we've ever really done comprehensive surveys of our customers to see what they like and what they don't like and the same with attendance um, I was kind of a, a surprise to hear we don't do attendances. So we don't know who's moving in and who's moving out in a certain day to know what's a busy day and what is not a busy day. So, so these are things I'd really like to really hone down on, um, even being on the Leisure Committee with, with uh, Donna, that you know we were following this very closely because this has been in our, our subcommittee now for a number of, of years. And uh, we think it can really enhance uh, everyone's uh, you know experiences sure. but we need to track it we need yeah. to uh, and i mean even at the library we have we have basically door counters for people coming in and out so that we know you know what a busy day is what a slow day is um so that's certainly something we can look at for for over there and i like the idea of surveys one of the things mary and i had talked about is scheduling appointments with folks so they could come in and and talk to us one-on-one -on -one or in small groups to to let us know what their concerns are what they're interested in doing. So that's one of the things we're going to be looking at doing in the near future. Councilor Falk. <clears throat> I, I know um, I've used the gym on a number of occasions, and um, I have a barcode scanner that I scan in, and I just assume that everybody that used the center has a barcode and they scan in. So we should know who's there if everybody follows the rules and scans in. And, and usually you have to say why you're there. Prime fitness is what I punch. And uh, so attendance shouldn't be, shouldn't be an issue as far as tracking if everybody's following the rules. Uh, the, the, the other thing um, was, uh, I, I do have a, a question. Uh, have any particular programs been eliminated starting July 1? Yes. 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 Folks, folks. A, a number of the fitness classes in the evening were uh, eliminated. Um, you know, we, we've tried to move some of them over to Thursday. Um, that's obviously not an ideal situation if you want to do, you know, Zumba followed by yoga followed by weights. Um, and that's just a, a, a one example. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so we, we did have to, to cancel a number of classes. Um, as we go forward, maybe there's going to be ways that we can increase the evening hours and reinstitute some of those. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I, I was also curious as to why you went with Saturday. I, I assume that people talked before you made some changes, and that's why you that picked was a Saturday. That was a council decision. Yeah, that, that was, was a council decision. decision. We decided Saturday? Yep. Uh, I mean, let's not, let's not put this, the pressure on the staff. This and, is a council decision. And, Why not? You made the decision. I said the council made the decision. Exactly. The decision. That's what I'm saying. Don't go back and forth. Right. So that's... that's communication one, one later. Yeah. Go ahead. Once these people are finished speaking, there's a portion of public communications, and you can all come up in, to the microphone and say whatever you like. But at this moment, these people... Uh, lady and gentlemen have have the floor so once this is over uh, and their portion of answering and then we will go to public communications and you can tell us whatever you like and we'll get back to you through the town manager we can't barter back and forth but we'll have answers so to to, to councillor Falk's question um saturdays if they're not well utilized i would much rather see those hours put back into the the evening so that we can continue the mm. programs that we we know were popular it may be that saturdays will prove to be very popular um but we're going to need some time to to yeah, really let, take let a look the at dust that. settle and then exactly. negotiate change or so whatever um, you know it, it will take time to kind of get this right yeah. yep. okay thank you council Crisati. Yeah, uh, Jason and Mary, uh, thank you for, for coming today. And uh, I know that you're going to be very flexible uh, and you're going to listen to what people have to say and the communication will be there. But I just want to say thanks for, uh, for coming and to listen to what everybody sure. does have to say and to hear their kind of recommendations as to, uh, you know, what the major issues are here. So, thank you. Okay, but thank you. Deputy Mayor Suzak. I guess my question is to Mary, because she might be a little bit familiar with, is there any overlap that you'll be seeing between the adult ed and what's offered at the senior center? As far as like yoga or anything like that in the interim, when we look and see how any of these programs lay out? I haven't looked at that aspect yet, but I'd be more than willing to to see what they're offering versus what recreation's offering versus what the senior center's offering. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we don't want to duplicate the same service at the same time. Well, yeah, the right, same we don't population. want to duplicate at the same time, but you know, in the meantime, as we're watching to see how the schedule you know, works now and needs to be changed, if there's any kind of opportunities for people to, you know, do programs that they've participated in through the adult ed that is another avenue that you know we are an all-inclusive community any other Thanks, any other questions any other questions no, thank you very much for coming Appreciate thank, it. You. thank you thank you thank you all. <clears throat> do we have a list Suzanne, you got a list? No. no. One second. Um, item number seven, public communications. Again, we ask folks, you'll have five minutes to speak for the first time. And if folks like to speak for the second time, you'll have three minutes after that. Again, we ask that you keep it, again, respectful, refrain from personalities. And uh, I, I unfortunately will give you a 30 second kind of cutoff. I don't mean I'm not doing it to be rude when it's 30 seconds left. But again, at your 30 second, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, uh, warning that'll just be me because again don't want to cut you off with two seconds left so anyone who this is the public communications per counselor uh denny's just instructions uh judy okay. how you doing hi judy kilty is this on 83 abbey road um before i start um we've been asking uh, Okay. Before I start, we've been asked to be patient with all the changes. We've been patient for over a year since Susan Lather was let go or whatever happened with her. We've been patient and, and 
our patience is running thin. Um, okay, taking a page from Liz Davis, I'll start with a positive. In my opinion, we have exceptional EMS service, fire service, an award-winning police force, and it, which is a model for other towns. Our public library is more than functional. Miss Lisa, Lisa does an outstanding job with her children's programs, and my grandkids love it, and they love her. They provide a vast array of programs and activities for all ages. My road is cleaned of snow in a timely, professional manner. Trash and recycling and yard waste are always picked up on schedule. These are all town services that meet and or exceed my expectations. My property taxes have gone up just over $700. My car taxes went up over $250. But I do understand that there's a cost for services provided, and I don't think anyone would be willing to give up any of the services I mentioned. Now the negative things. Our public structures have been neglected and allowed to pretty much fall apart for years. On the coldest week of the winter, we lost all the heat at JFK because you allowed the existing boilers to sit for a long time, not knowing that they were not functioning, instead of planning for such an emergency. The cost to fix all of our buildings is over $110 million, and that number continues to climb with no action taken. The disgusting filth found at Henry Barnard is a disgrace. The staff and student have been seriously ill because their pleas for help were dismissed and ignored. Is it clean yet? I don't think so. Kids have to dodge tra trash cans collecting the rain on every, every time it rains. Your solution? Replace the water-soaked tiles instead of fixing the cause of the leaks. That way it doesn't look so bad. This is, this is not a new problem. It's been happening for years. I have been standing up and not only speaking against these issues for 30 years, but I've actually done something trying to promote change. I'm getting too old for this nonsense. It's my time to go to our beautiful senior center, our award-winning senior center, and enjoy it. But wait a minute, what have you done? You cut the staff, you cut the programs, you cut the hours. Someone had this brilliant idea and didn't bother to share it with the people most affected. I'm going to say this in loud and clear, fix it. Admit that all of you who voted for this, Republicans, made a huge mistake and reinstate all these hours and programs and staff. It would only take a tiny fraction of our rainy day fund. Listen to your Democratic colleagues and the seniors tonight and remember one sure thing, old people vote. Thank you. Ma'am. Name and address, please. Welcome. Just talking to this? Yes. Um, my name is Teresa Richard, and I live on 30, 366 George Washington Road. Um, I sent a memorandum. I emailed it out. I hope most everybody got it. I tried to give everybody the shot at it. My biggest concern and my problem is I'm a working senior. I was not privileged to be at any talks or meet and greets or those things were done during the day when I'm working. If you're going to do that, I'd appreciate it being done in the evening. The evening programs are cut. You've affected my life, the quality and wellness of my life by doing that. I've been attending Zumba Goal twice a week, Monday and Wednesday evenings since March, and I've lost weight. I've increased my balance. I've increased my mobility. Uh, it's not just the social aspect. Yes, I've made friends, and I'm not the only one you're affecting by these decisions. Saturdays, I'm not sure how that's going to play out. Many family functions are on the weekends, so that when you get together, I have my adult children, I have six grandchildren. When you get together with them, those functions are usually on the weekend. I really would like to see the programs brought back, the hours brought back. I'd like to see more evening programs. I would attend many more functions at the senior center where they offered in the evening. And I know I'm not the only working senior citizen in this town. I'll be probably be working, as my daughter says, until lunch on my funeral because I just, you know, have to. I'm in that situation. It, it's a, I understand you're between a rock and a hard spot. I understand about budgets. But you really need to listen 
to the people that you're affecting. I feel like I was blindsided by the whole thing. I do not subscribe to newspapers. I do not subscribe to a cable channel. So communication for me, I hear from my friends at the senior center. I'm obviously not there during the day when people are there to speak. And I know I'm not alone in feeling this way. So uh, if the senior center is truly for seniors, it's also for working seniors and not just the retiree. And you know, when you make those decisions, you really need to think about it because you are affecting the quality of life for all of us. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, sir, in back. As you can see, I'm a senior. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome. And I was a former charter member of the Friends of the Enfield Senior Center. And, uh, name chair, name I'm sorry. Sorry. My name is John Dubois. I live at 11 Deepwood Road in Enfield. I've been a resident of Enfield for 50 years. Uh, I'm talking briefly about the, the dilemma that faces the Senior Center's Friends Committee. We're no longer a functional body, and yet we have money for, for use in the Senior Center in the six-digit figures, it's in an account, and we're denied uh, permission to use any of it and, and anything that happens in the club. We provided money for to, to uh, all the equipment in the fitness room. We bought rugs. We've done all that stuff. Our mission is to provide for the, the use and the care of the, of the senior center. Uh, right now, we're a non-functional body. With all that money there, and with all the money we've already donated to the town, as a, as a result, uh, it's non-functional, and I no longer am a member of it for that reason. I'd like to see somebody talk to somebody, find out we've been accredited three times by the national body. As a result of that, Enfield got a lot of publication about the place to visit, to learn lessons, is the senior center here in town. Every five years, we've been reevaluated and once again awarded accreditation. Three times we've done that. I doubt it very much if we're ever going to receive that kind of a notoriety. Uh, that's about all I have. I say I hate to see this thing happen because we, our mission was to take care of the seniors and make sure that that was not a community center, but a senior center, as it was when we uh, uh, had the end. Thank you, sir. Appreciate. Thank you. It. Yep. Marlene, yep, sorry. Then, yep. Hi, my name is Marlene Hojanski, 3 Roland Street, Enfield. I'm a member of Triad, Friends of the Senior Center, Commission on Aging, and I was on the building committee for the Senior Center. First and foremost, I must say the Senior Center was built to serve all seniors and that includes us working seniors. With these new hours, you have excluded working seniors, the ones who pay well in advance to use the gym, the ones who sign up for exercises a few times a week, we pay in advance, only to have it cut out. You're telling us to just come on Thursday and do it all, that doesn't work for us, that doesn't work. If we were to open an hour later, close an hour earlier, Keep the nine to five, or nine to one rather, on our eight, nine to one on a Friday. That would serve everybody. Saturday should be a non-issue, really it's family time. Um, I have one last thing I wanted to read, and this actually was given to me by the minute, person who takes the minutes on the Commission on Aging. And I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but you appoint us, powers and duties to assure older citizens equal access to town resources, facilities, programs, and development through consultation and participation in planning. I hope that Jason and Mary realize this and you realize this so that we can go forward, use us to make this better. Thank you. Thank you, Marlene, appreciate it. Ma'am, thank you. Good evening. I'm Lynn Kostick, 
13 Teach Street. I'm just gonna read, it's easier for me. Uh, 17 years ago, I moved my family to Enfield because I was told that the schools were the up and coming in Connecticut. So fast forwarding to Enfield today, the schools are now falling apart and there is a mold problem and every school, and it's affecting every school um, in this district and our children, our teachers, they're getting sick. It's not fair. It's just a downright shame what the town committees, both the Board of Education and the town council has done to that poor teacher that has taken ill and basically is in having trouble trying to make ends meet financially at this point. As a mother of a teacher whom my daughter graduated from Enrico Fermi High School, I would have done the same thing that father did. I would have came up here and I, I would have spoken on her behalf if my daughter became that sick. And I pray that she will be better and that this town can help her out financially due to the time she has lost, due to the illness caused, sorry, <laughs> caused by the poor quality of the air in our schools. <clears throat> Next thing I would like to address is the Senior Center. When this was built, it, was, it restored some of my hope for this town. It was a state-of-the-art state facility with multiple activities and events. Recently, your choice of removing Susan Lather and reducing the hours at this facility has me dumbfounded. I just don't get it. <laughs> What are, what are all you guys doing? You're supposed to be representing the people of Enfield. So what's happening with our children? What's happening with our seniors? What are you gonna do for them? And basically, I am one of the seniors now. So who's your, I, I wanna know who your next target's gonna be. Is it the residents who are paying the abundance in taxes and, and watching this town just go downhill at a super speed? Sorry. If I had to make a decision today whether or not I would have moved to Enfield, the answer would be no in light of all this. One last item I'd like to just bring up. Why can't a pride flag be flown during the month of June? There's enough people in this town uh, of the gay persuasion that would, would love that. The whole month of I mean, your answer to this was, oh, if, if we do it for the gays, then we gotta do it for this organization and that organization, and we'll be flying flags forever. But the thing is, what organization has a whole month dedicated to them? So I, I would really, really like to see that happen. Or you know, have something for the gay community, you know, just to recognize uh, um, June Pride Month. So, in short, uh, if you want to see this town thrive, all of you need to really take a step back, look at the bigger picture, because right now you're, you're, you're doing this tunnel focus thing. You, you need to really take a step back and take a really good look. And speaking from someone who hasn't lived here all my life, coming into this, it's like, oh boy. And, you need, you need to recognize what the residents have to say, and you, you were voted in to represent the residents, not yourselves, the residents. So may God bless you because you all are gonna need it. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Barbara Gilley, and I live at 17 Buchanan Road in Enfield. My husband and I moved here in 1970 from Brooklyn, New York with our four children. I was a stay-at-home mom until they got older. Four graduated and went off to college. One came back. 
Ed Enfield is an aging town. We're losing our youth. And now you don't seem to appreciate the senior citizens. I am the past, the present, and I hope to be the future of Enfield. My children grew up here. I pay my taxes. My taxes are over $5,000 a year. That's a large percentage of my income. At present, I'm 79 years old. I've been going to the senior center for 12 years. Week in, week out, month in, month out to exercise, and I made friends. I went to exercise because that's what the medical practitioners tell us to do. Exercise, eat right. That'll help you to stay active longer. I'm the present at 79 because I enjoy the Senior Center. It's very important to me. It's a big part of my life. And I hope to be the, pre uh, the future for the next 10 or 15 years using the Senior Center. And this time to cut back, I think, is foolish. There are more seniors now living longer. There are more seniors that need the senior center. And behind us are the baby boomers. And a lot of them are still working. Every day, hundreds of people turn 65. And they hope to live in their until their 90s and be active. They run, they play tennis, they play golf. They exercise. They need a senior center that's open, that's open during the day and into the evening. And you need us to be here and to, pee, to, pe to, play, to pay our taxes to keep this town going. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Marie Pisner, 25 Roy Street, Enfield. Um, I did not come here tonight to speak. I came here for the DOT afterwards, but I'm listening. Um, I'm actually a working senior in town, um, and I just signed up for my first class this Thursday in yoga, and I'm kind of excited. Um, I think we have a great senior center. Um, I sat here two weeks ago, and I complimented the council on the wonderful job they did jointly. Because it's my understanding that the budget was passed unanimously, that you guys worked really, really hard to come up with a budget that would keep the majority of our services intact, and it would not single out a certain demographic or age. And I think you've done it. And I compliment you again on your hard work. The Senior Center took some cuts. It's 12 hours. I am sure under the guidance of Mary and Jason and with the council, you are going to come up with a solution. It's like everything else. Change is hard. We all like the same thing. I am the first one to tell you I dislike change so much. But we are in a changing world. Our state is changing. Tonight on the news, they're showing Milford and Madison and Clinton, and they're cutting lifeguards because they don't have the money. <laughs> it's a fact of life that not just Connecticut, but every state in our country is feeling a budget crunch. And I compliment you again on working together. Democrat, Republican, together. Because you are making this town a better place to live in. And I compliment you again, and I have every hope and thought that you are going to correct anything that goes wrong. So you have 150% of my, last week it was 100, now it's 150. Keep going, guys. Thank you. Wendy.
Welcome. Wendy Costa, uh, 49 Steel Road. Two weeks ago, I sat before you. In summary, I praise the council for the time and effort you all put into the budget for this next fiscal year. You were handed a huge cut in funding from the state that required either a significant increase to the mill rate, a significant decrease in services to the town, or a combination of a less harsh increased mill rate and decrease in services. In my opinion, you wisely chose a combination. You came together and tried to maintain as many services and jobs as you could, and it was refreshing to see that with one exception, all amendments to the town manager's budget were unanimously approved. I also spoke about how I might have chosen a different set of service reductions than you did, just as many of the 40,000 residents of Enfield may have different ideas. This really became evident this week when following on social media the posts about our recent car tax bills. Since moving here six years ago, I wondered why we always received separate bills for each vehicle. To me, it was a pain and a waste of paper and postage. I was so happy to see that this year we have one bill with all the vehicles listed on it. I never imagined that anyone would not see this as an improvement, but clearly not everyone agrees with me. My only point being that no decision on services will ever please the entire community. I, for one, am happy with that change and the cost savings. I also believe that while clearly social media can be a vehicle for anyone to air petty or ridiculous gripes, venting frustrations, etc., there are also legitimate issues raised in these same posts. This same post about car taxes included comments ranging from receiving the bills so late with a due date of July 1st to why so many vehicles seem to appreciate in value from the prior year. Unless you are a first-time car owner, everyone should know that car taxes are due every July 1st you always have until August 1st to pay without penalty, and you should just assume the mill rate will go up every year. I would bet that the bills probably go out about the same time every year as they can't be sent until the mill rate is decided. Yes, the mill rate increase on autos this year was substantial, way more than anyone would have expected, but we've known about it for over a month now. However, the number of folks commenting that their car values increased from last year to this year to me is a very valid concern. But enough about car taxes. The social media discussion that bothered me most this past week was the discussion about the senior center and its new reduced hours of operation. I'm sure everyone is accustomed to the original hours, which include, included evening hours Monday through Thursday, and it would have been fabulous to be able to continue that level of service. But as I've said before, providing comparatively higher level of services at a comparatively lower level mill rate is not a sustainable model. Prior to the adoption of new hours, only West Hartford had senior center hours of operation higher than Enfield, and that is only because they have two senior centers. We were tied for second with Glastonbury and way ahead of Bloomfield at number four. We do not pay anywhere near the taxes of West Hartford or Glastonbury. They both have higher mill rates and higher property values. So I decided to do some research on various senior centers. I looked at West Hartford, Glastonbury, Vernon, Windsor, Windsor Lock, Suffield, Summers, and South Windsor. Glastonbury Senior Center is open two evenings and Saturdays. None of the other senior centers have any evening hours or Saturday hours. So yes, I do expect working seniors and other seniors that use the senior center in the evenings to be disappointed and expect that they would voice their disappointment in constructive ways, including social media. I'm thrilled that people came out tonight to voice their opinions. I also suspect that if the reduced hours were 12 to 8 p.m., we'd have a different group of seniors here at a council meeting. Maybe Enfield should consider being open more evenings and fewer mornings. Maybe they already looked at attendance in the morning versus the evening and eliminating the evening hours made the most sense. Maybe the decision was reached to just be more consistent with neighboring towns. I personally don't know what factors were considered when deciding the new hours, but if I'm one of the disappointed working seniors who now has limited access, I'll find a forum to ask. But to equate this reduction in hours to treating Enfield seniors like dirt is unfair. I think Enfield does more for its senior citizens, and nearly all citizens, than many other towns. I did not want to make this a political post, a discussion of Republicans versus Democrats, because I firmly believe that all 11 of you give very generously of your time and energy to the town of Enfield. You certainly don't do it for the pay. I do believe you want to do what is best for the town and its residents. You are faced with a monumental task of minimizing the mill rate increase while maintaining services at a reasonable level. But comments on social media as well as here tonight seem to place the blame for the reduction in hours solely at the hand of Republicans. It should be noted that at the budget meeting on April 19th for discussion of social services and Department of Libraries, no Democrats were present. 
To be fair, I watched it on YouTube, and you can't see the whole room, but there were no Democrats for roll call or votes, and certainly no one asked any questions about the budgets presented. While there was not a direct discussion of cutting the hours of the senior center or Wendy, what those hours should be, Wendy, the, fina seconds. the financial information available certainly would lead one to believe things had to change. The budget request had a salary decrease of approximately $70,000, which I can only assume would have included a reduction in hours of operation. The council then unanimously approved an amendment further reducing part-time salaries by an additional 13000 To be honest, I don't know whether the town council actually makes or reviews decisions at the level of details of what hours to be open. When, Wendy, sorry, i got to cut you off, sorry. Can I just finish my sentence? And Last sentence, back? right, go ahead. Or whether they leave it up to the department heads to make appropriate decisions given budget constraints. Either way, to cry politics over this decision just seems wrong to me. Thank you. Sir. Welcome. Respected members of the board. Welcome. And I promise to keep my comments brief for everyone. Name, name uh, and address, sir. It has to do with, uh, again, the reduction Remember of hours. Name and address, please. Name oh, my name's Andrew Cody. Seven generations in this town. I've lived here 64 years. Um, in regards to the reduction of senior center hours, uh, my wife is a working senior, and she spends a lot of time over there. And what does the increase of hours do? But it enhances a sense of community. People know each other. It's the kind of place where I want to, place I want to live is where people meet each other on the street and know each other. And the, the senior center is, accommodates such a thing. Uh, and then the last two comments that I want to make is that a gentleman here may, had the obvious solution. Friends of the senior center have hundreds of thousands of dollars to take care of this problem. It's obvious. Use their money. They're offering it gratis. And then the third thing I wanted to mention is uh, it was suggested that the uh, council um, put up um, the homosexual flag around town. I'm opposed to that. I find it very offensive. Just like some people down south found the Confederate flag offensive. I find that flag offensive. It doesn't represent me. That's about all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am. Hi, I'm Peggy Redfern. I live at 61 Neelands Road. I'm a senior citizen, and I've been uh, using the senior center for two years now. I am a widow, and this senior center has become a great community for me. I also have um, used the senior center because my health wasn't well, and um, my doctor recommended it to go there and to take some classes, and I've improved my health and my sense of community. I've made a lot of friends since I've been there, and I'm a working senior. The only time I can go there is at nighttime. Um, right now, I'm floundering. I, I actually panicked when I found out the hours were being cut because I was concerned about my health. I didn't know what I was going to do. I'm searching for classes in other areas. And I think I found two classes. And I'm sad because I'm going to miss the people I had made friends with. And I have to go out of the town. I'm going out, even out of state, to take classes. And it bothers me because I paid money. And I don't understand where all the money was going for these classes. Why these, these, we paid money for these classes. And we paid it well in advance. I don't understand why there's such a disconnect. I, I'm, I'm just really sad. I mean, I, when I go to work, I was, used, used to be very proud of the senior center. I used to tell everybody, you've got to go to the Enfield Senior Center. It's, it's an amazing community, and, and people were just 
so amazed that I had such pride in it. And right now, I'm just, I'm just disappointed. I still have pride, but I'm disappointed because I can only use it one night a week. And you're offering all these classes, but it's all one night. I mean, I can't do weights, I can't do yoga, and I can't do Zumba all in one night. I mean, you're, you're, you'll kill me. <laughs> I mean, I can't do it. I gotta do, it's one or just one class. And Saturdays are not an option for me because I have kids and I have grandchildren. My weekends are my time with family and when I catch up to do my chores. I mean, I'm mowing my lawn. I mean, I'm doing shopping and I'm spending time with my grandchildren because that, that's everything to me. So, I mean, it, it, just, it, it just hurts. I just would like to think that there has to be a compromise. With everything in life, there's a compromise. And I'm hoping that Jason will be able to come up with a compromise so that the seniors will be able to use the center and, and it'll be a community again. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the town council? Jack? We started this. So we got still 20 minutes. Yeah. Hey, welcome, Jack. Jack Sheridan, 7 Buchanan Road. Is, my, is it on? Yeah. Is it on? Um, I have a few things. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the obvious thing that hits me is the $84 million that's on item uh, H, page 5, for the JFK. Um, I think in light of what's going on, and, and I have a distinct feeling that a lot of the things that are happening with the delays and uh, fixing the roofs and things like that, causing the mold and dust and whatever, uh, it's, it's, it's being put on the back burner because you know that that's coming up as a referendum, and the people are not going to approve a referendum for that kind of money when we find ourselves in these tight straits. I, I'd also like to bring up the fact that um, at the last meeting, a lot of the people here may or may not know, but you guys actually supplemented the shorted money from the state for the circuit breaker, for the tax for the seniors. So when you start taking money from the general fund to help support monies that should have been uh, funded by the state, it's another unfunded mandate. I'm not one of the people that have that, but I'm sure the people that do are very appreciative of that. Um, and, and the other thing that was said, well, I, I have an article here that is a pretty good article. I'll leave it with you. I don't want to read the thing because it's pretty complicated, but what it does is it subscribes to state tax increases on property tax. And what it causes to happen uh, how do tax rates link the rising home values? And it turns out that Connecticut is seventh worst. And that means the home values, because the tax ratio is higher, the home values go down, so you have to raise the mill rate. If the, to if the values were going up, the mill rate wouldn't have happened. So we have to be very cognizant of how much mill rate, raise my taxes $420, uh, I got a 14-year-old truck, is $180. Um, and I know that Honeywell could have, that could have been included with the boilers at JFK, and it could have been included in that energy contract, which for some reason it wasn't. Um, and I also, I can't blame anyone who comes before you or the Board of Ed that's concerned about their kids or even the teachers' health in these schools. They're our most important asset, and I'm glad that there are people out there looking after that. I think that part of the, part of the problem with, for instance, I, I, I wasn't at the meeting, but I went to the Board of Ed meeting. The man that we all know was there on behalf of his daughter, I believe it is, as a teacher. He's a very eloquent speaker. He was very courteous to everyone. 
and he had one more sentence to read, and I compliment you just before because you allowed her to go on with the last sentence. They didn't, they stopped her. It's a three minute deal, and they stopped her, and Liz had to finish the sentence for her. I think that's, that, that, that's terrible. That they're there talking about their kids, their most valuable asset, and you, you're denying these people. First of all, they can only speak once, unlike here where you can get a chance to come back. But to cut it to three minutes and then interrupt. And even at that, he was so courteous in saying, geez, I'm sorry, I, I, can, can we talk afterwards? So I compliment you for that. And I, I, I do compliment you for the efforts that you've done on behalf of the people here. Uh, I, I know it's hard. It's hard for me. I mean, um, my neighbor at, at 17 Buchanan, same thing. I mean, we're the same age and got the same problem. You know, the taxes keep going up. And uh, I didn't realize she was my age because she looks a lot younger than me. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> hey, thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? For the, this gentleman, sir. No, go ahead. You're in the front seat. Yes, you <laughs> It's, it's just a play. <laughs> you know that I'm a senior. <laughs> Actually, my name is Frank Cadis, mayor of Vernon Road. <laughs> he knows that. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you ten minutes to speak. Yeah, I know. No, you know, I'm listening to these people and you know, rightfully so, they have complaints. Uh, changes to their schedule, everybody. Yeah, everybody's got to give a little bit here and there. Somebody didn't do the homework on the our changes. Probably didn't look at it deep enough. People that have paid, are you going to be obliged to have a legal action to give them their money back or what? All these questions. We have all kinds of questions in town. Are we going to be sued by this person, that person? You have the senior center, wonderful place. I don't know if you've ever been there. You should go down and see it. I know a couple of gentlemen that I exercise with. It's wonderful, but we have to give a little bit here and there. Funds are low. Uh, listening to the uh, the boss up at the prison, he has these people from all over the state. They're in our state. I mean, uh, in, uh, yeah, in our state. From every other town. Why aren't you doing something to stop some of this shenanigans? that they have to go into jail. It costs money up there. And they're using our water. Let them pay. The towns. Um, I just, uh, I have heartaches about why people are upset. I don't like to see people upset. Um, I think we need to do our homework there's places that we can get revenue, and it's not going to be an, an, an impossible uh, problem. I don't know if I'm getting short on time, but I'm going to be. You're doing great, Frank. Okay. I told you, you got 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. All right. Everyone well, else only gets five. No. No. <laughs> uh, you know, it upsets. I go to the senior center, and I hear so many people. They, they come to me, and they say, Frank, what are we going to do? I know I'm going to answer to some of these people that are sitting in this audience right now. You could have done something a little bit more. Well, yeah, you know. I'm begging that people would look into things a little bit more. See if there's some place that you can save some money. I know that we can save some money in town by just the recycling, because that was on that thing with the recycling. We're making money there. 
but you go by the trash cans and they're throwing away good, good money. Well, that's what's hurting the senior center, the new trucks for, the, for picking up the recycle, the trucks that take the little amosite patches and goes around and fixes the holes that you don't like. It's all these little things. And the little things are what we have to look at, not the big things. That's it. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good seeing you. And I had no problems on my street with the families that were there. We had 72 kids on that street, and it was, I don't know, 25 houses. But if anybody wanted to have a party, you want to have a party, have a party. Don't complain when somebody else has a party. Fourth of July, phew, don't complain. Thank you, Frank. Look. Live in love. Sorry, Kelly in the back. All right, so, okay, go ahead. Hey, I gotta go home. I gotta go to bed. I don't know. Welcome. My name is Helen Olander. Mike, we finally have meeting in person. Good to see you. <laughs> and um, I live at 81 Carriage House in Enfield. I've lived in Enfield now for 23 years. And <clears throat> most of that time I've been a senior. But this, the senior center is, is home for so many people. I mean, home is the community. Community makes it what it is. And I think, I'll just be brief, I think one of the problems that we had with all these changes like this there was no communication. There was no previous thing brought up. And the people that it affect were never asked, what could we do to make it better? What can we do to change these things that so everybody would be included? And I, there are many ways that people are talking about you know, changing the hours on different days. There are a lot of things we could have done. And communication, God, communication is such an important thing. And with seniors, we love to talk. And we love to be with people. It just, it just isn't fair that they, you know, that. Nobody came to us and said, hey, this is going to happen. We just got a, a sheet of paper and said, this is it. And we went, what do you mean this is it? We don't, isn't somebody going to ask us what we feel about it? And that was a big problem. And the second thing I want to talk about is this Friends of the Enfield Senior Center. The Friends of the Enfield Senior Center is not a non-entity or something that's out here. That is us, all of us. We all pay into that on a regular basis. And they take our money and they make it grow. And then when we had a problem or something that needed to be fixed, we say, well, hey, we need this. It was there. We never had a problem. The last nine months, they have not been allowed to do anything. And that's, Joe, you know what, how much money they have to use and how much they've spent in town. There's just no reason why we can't take advantage of ourselves and let this pay for some of these things. And I know you know all the classes that people take are paid for by the students. So we're not, you know, we're losing money now by not having something in the senior center but that's just my complaints and things right now but I just you know I just feel basically it's communication if we don't communicate what you want changes and I know you were working on the budget and it's not easy to do a budget in this type of atmosphere that we have now but we do need communication and if we're going to make changes please talk to us seniors we're really intelligent and we like to do things and we can also help you thank, thank you thank you very much Kelly? Hey, unlock the front door. I didn't. The seniors can go the wrong door. I gotta go out this door, so somebody's gotta lock that other door. So, yeah. Welcome. So just so, so folks know, we have about five minutes left. So if anyone else, after Kelly, most we can take one or two folks for the first time. Just so anyone who wants to speak. Go ahead, Kelly. Um, Kelly Hemmler, uh, 10 Hartford Ave. Um, because of uh, Governor Malloy's cuts to the money coming back to Enfield, you folks had a difficult time closing the gap. I watched and went to some of the budget meetings, and I know it wasn't easy. 
Um, there was a combination of uh, increased taxes and some services adjusted, and I appreci appreciate all your efforts, and I'm glad to see that the new budget, that all the, all the changes were agreed to by the entire council. That means a lot. And um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the first time? We have about four minutes left for our public communications. Anyone else for the first time? I want to make sure everyone has a chance to speak, if who, who wanted to speak. Anyone else like to speak for the second time? Go ahead, Judy. You got three minutes? All right. We'll try to fit in two more folks. Um, Judy Kilty, AB3, Abbey, Abbey Road. Um, I agree so much with what Helen said. So much of this could have been avoided if there had been communication, which there just doesn't seem to be. Um, as a senior center member, a member of the Commission of Aging, and a member of Triad, I would like to see a well-advertised question and answer session with Jason and Mary at the senior center. There's so very many questions and little, if any, answers. It would be nice to have a dollar amount that this move saves, because I would assume someone must have that or they wouldn't have done this. I have to assume that Jason and Mary would be able to answer our questions definitively, or they would not have been hired for this position. I don't understand the connection between the rec center and the senior center. It may be obvious, obvious to some, but not to me. And I would like to have that explained in depth of what it's, how it benefits everyone. We have questions. We deserve answers. And I really think a detailed explanation of what the decision was based on would really, really help things and make people understand. But try to stop reacting to things and do something first and involve the people so that you don't have to react. Act with the people. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Wendy, do you? Yes. Wendy, and then ma'am, you'll be the last one. Okay. Sorry, Sorry. we're uh, we got an hour limit. Three minutes, Wendy. Yes. Sorry, I'm, uh, it's terrible. Wendy Costa, I still live at 49 Steel Road. Um, I just want to finish because I believe in the start positive, yep. then go negative, then finish positive. Um, in the end, I just want to point out that the original town manager budget uh, to keep services approximately the same was a four mil increase. The budget passed was a 1.9 mil increase, and therefore we all have to expect service reductions or increased fees to reflect the budget. These cuts will most likely impact all residents in some way and not target one specific group. I do wish there was a better communication vehicle for all the changes, but honestly, in this day and age, I don't know what that is. That being said, all of the department budget discussions that were held were open to the public, available afterwards on YouTube, and there was also the town-wide budget hearing that provided very detailed financial information on the town manager proposed budget. All the budget amendments except one were unanim unanimously approved by all the council members. So shame on John Q. Public if I did not make use of those opportunities to find out what was happening and to voice my opinion. Certainly, it would be a beautiful thing if there could be one concise communication of what the implications of the budget cuts means to residents, what services are changing, what fees are changing, and what went into the decision of each, but I recognize that is probably not doable. So the end result will be that these changes will be communicated in whatever fashion and debated over social media over the course of several months, unfortunately. I do, however, want to reiterate that I appreciate the time and effort of all the 11 councillors. Your dedication and hard work to pass this budget clearly shows commitment to the town and its residents. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Appreciate it. Ms. Gilly will uh, yeah. Yeah, yep. It'll be the last for this. Okay. And you got three minutes, three minutes ma'am. I won't need them. I just want to say Barbara Gilly, 17 Buchanan Road, 79 years old, Jack. And if someone had asked us, if, if we had been asked a month ago, two months ago, and there was a survey sent around, and if we were asked if we would pay more for our classes, I'm sure most of the people that take the classes would have said yes, if it meant keeping them, because we enjoy them, they're important to us, but nothing was, was asked of us, no, no input was asked, we want to help, but we have to be asked and let, let us know what's going on before we can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, it's over an hour, so we will move on to item number eight, Council of Communication and Petitions. Would anyone from the Council like to speak? Councilor Denny? 
Yeah, first of all, uh, I'd just like to say uh, thank you all for coming, and uh, we'll take all your uh, things into consideration, and I'm sure the, uh, the two individuals that were here were, are writing plenty of notes. Uh, one of the things that was said that a lot of seniors aren't on YouTube, so they're not geared to uh, what's on the computer or the Tom we Tom Town website. So there's uh, a, a communications problem. Uh, the next thing I'd like to say is I want to uh, congratulate uh, all the uh, individuals uh, that got a wartime service ribbon. Uh, I wasn't there to uh, give my congratulations, uh, so I'm going out. If you can hear me on TV, I'm a veteran myself. Uh, one of the reasons why I wasn't there is I wasn't invited. Thank you. Councilor no. On, on the seniors, and I, I really hope Jason, you know, looks into this, and it, it seems like it's just such an issue of ours that if Sunday, if um, Saturdays don't work and to restore it during the week is probably going to make all the difference and make things right. So again, we need to do our research. Uh, we only assume as counselors when it's when we get the information that that research has been done and there'll be large crowds on Saturdays. So we'll, we'll find out. And I know Jason and Mary will make sure that they follow this through for us. And the combination of why we have a leisure, leisure department, if Mary's running a bus trip to New York City and the senior center's running the same trip to New York City, there's no reason why we can't run one bus to New York City or two bus, buses from the same, uh, same department. So the, this is the, one of the main reasons so we don't overlap. So we can use the same uh, uh, programs that Mary May, you all can go with them too. So we don't have two buses, two programs, all running for the same thing. That's a good idea. Um, I, I can't tell you how many family members on, on Zumba are, are, are mad at me. So I get it. I really do. And, and it, it bothers me. So that's why I'm putting all my, my faith in, in uh, Jason now to see if we can correct this uh, in one way. Um, and secondly, with what Ed said, I want to tail on this, and I'm, I'm really a little disappointed with Senator Kissel's office, um, and I'd, I'd like to see if we could try to get a little better communication between us, the council, and, and Senator Kissel's office. Number one, the Veterans Medal Ceremony. We weren't invited. No one on the council was. There was actually no uh, direct uh, co conversation with your office because your office checked. Um, and that's the answer we got back. Uh, this happened two weeks ago with the train station also. The train station was, uh, uh, the train was dedicated first ride out of Windsor Locks. This council was not invited. Um, and when we called his office and asked, we were told, well, you can drive to Hartford, but you can't ride the bus. So I'm gonna, uh, uh, the train rather. But I'm gonna tell and thank the uh, uh, selectman from Windsor Locks, Chris Kervick, that made a phone call and got me on it. That easy. So I, I think that's a, a, a personal uh, uh, issue for me, and, uh, and I want to uh, make sure it's publicly stated that those two things uh, we should have been invited to. And that's all sides. Thank you. Council Crisati. <clears throat> I want to thank all the seniors that did show up today um, and state their opinion and, and their concerns about uh, the communication that um, you know that maybe didn't take place and that will take that it will take place. I do have all the confidence in Jason and Mary uh, to to listen to your concerns and for them to uh, correct any uh, issues that that will take place. But I have the utmost confidence in uh, Jason and Mary to take take care of this. I know that I'm on the uh, Commission on Aging with a few of you that spoke today and uh, you know these are things that uh, you know we have discussed uh, previously uh, to that. So we will uh, we'll move forward with that now. Okay, thank you. Oh, a couple other things. Uh, first of all, graduation over at Enfield High School. Uh, they, the ceremony was very, uh, 
very moving. The speech that Principal Clark gave to the uh, graduating class was very inspiring. And, um, you know, once again, congratulations to all the graduates of, uh, of Enfield High School. On another note, uh, the Hall of Fame Committee uh, has announced their uh, 2018 induction class. And uh, the following people, uh, Ryan Aiken, Rob Burns, Raphael Serrato, Kristen Carrot, Mike Linehan, Fred Medina will be inducted uh, in September. Uh, also, the Enfield Eagles girls hockey uh, ice program uh, that was instituted back in the 70s is going to be inducted along with the 1987 Enfield High's boys soccer team. And uh, that should be a good ceremony and uh, it's always a good event to attend. So I just want to mention that. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Davis. First, I want to thank everybody for coming and speaking. I could go down if you want to wait five minutes, and I'll read everybody's names to personally thank each one because I did write them down. But uh, I'm sure you guys want to move along. I don't think, as far as I can remember, that the council voted at all to cut the hours of the nights at the senior center. I don't recall any of us voting for that. If, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I don't recall. It didn't go to a vote. Yes, it did. To cut the nights? We cut the hours, yeah. It was up to the staff to come up with it. Right, it's, a, it's, a it's up to decision. the staff to come up with it, but we council didn't say to cut. cut the hours, so it's a council okay. decision. And I, I did want to clarify, um, Wendy, thank you for coming and speaking. And yes, that meeting, no Democrat was there. We had a fellow friend that lost their father. So we're actually there consulting the family, which was very important. This individual really needed support that night. Um, so apologize that we did miss a meeting. But when someone loses a loved one, they kind of need support pretty bad. And that's where all of us showed up to be there. Um, and I, I do want, I have total faith in Jason and Mary's going to do the right thing. They're going to communicate with everybody and they're going to fix this. I, I just, you know, I know it. Mary's been great with all the programs in town. Jason's been great at the library. And I also know our town, I want to say acting, but you know, I, you're our town manager. Chris Bromson went to the senior center because a lot of seniors told me that you're very respectful, that you listened to him, you know, and he was communicating. Yes, it was a little bit late. But uh, do give them a chance because he was there and he talked to everybody. And, and believe me, Bromson's going to do what he can to, to fix it along with Jason and Mary. So it's not just being whipped under the rug and thrown away. Um, you know, it's great that you all have such great sessions to switch things and it still saves money. So it just needs a little more communication tweaking and I'm sure everything will be fine. Uh, I did go to the wartime service medal ceremony myself being a combat veteran of two wards iraq and afghanistan was not invited also but a friend called me two hours before it to ask if uh i would be there and i said what are you talking about so they said my dad's getting one i said i'll be there and i showed up with my daughter and i'll tell you yes the way it went down was wrong because i text you guys and it was last minute so no one can go um the mayor was there speaking but uh this was so the way it went down was wrong but I would tell you, if you were there to witness this, as much as people will be aggravated about other things, it's about our wartime heroes. And to see a lot of them from Vietnam that, you know, they were forgotten. And to watch them have their name be called and to be give their medal. It was, you know, you had tears in your eyes. Their families had tears. It was one of the most moving things I've ever witnessed. So I'm happy I got a phone call that one of my friend's dad was getting it and I showed up because be able to witness it is just something I'll never forget. So it, it was great and I, I wish it was, you know, advertised a little better, yes, but um, I, I definitely want to say it was great and um, very touching. And uh, on another note, my last note, uh, Gina Sakala wanted me to personally apologize. She cannot be here. Her son's in the All-Star game and she cannot miss it. She has to bring him to play in the game. So that's the only reason she is not here. Thank you. Councilor Ungar. I wanted to thank all the seniors and everyone who spoke tonight. Um, I love your passion and it, it encourages me that as a senior you can still be so active and participate in all these things that the Senior Center has to offer. And uh, we take everything to heart. We listen to everything. There's no little thing. You know, everything matters and I appreciate you all coming out. Um, on another note, um, I noticed in the PAR, it said in May that we're now accepting, through the mayor, to the town manager, um, that we're accepting debit cards, that people can pay their taxes and those type of things. I spoke with a resident last week, and they were trying to get a copy of their marriage certificate, and they didn't accept debit cards. 
and it was an inconvenience for them to have to travel to another bank to try to get cash. They didn't have checks. So I'm wondering, um, is the whole town hall set up for debit cards, or is it just the, the clerk's office? Or We'll have to look into it. I had seen that in the, in the um, PAR report, and Mr. Wilcox is here, but we can talk to the clerk's office after and give you a report okay. after tonight. Okay, thank you. Councilor Bosco. Okay. I, I have to say a few things. The smartest thing for me to do, but I've never been told I was that smart, was just not to say anything. But uh, that's not me. Um, just going back to try to go on some of the things that were said, uh, I ask every single one of you out in the audience and every single one of you that are out watching this, and I ask you if you voted on the $35 million uh, referendum we had put on back about six years ago to fix the school roofs and to fix the school buildings. And remember, it was the taxpayers that said no, not to fix them. Wasn't the council. We tried to get it. You, the taxpayer, in a referendum, voted no. So with the way our charter is written, we just can't pull money out of the, out of the water. And when, when something costs as much money as a roof, it has to go to referendum, and you keep trying to find ways of paying and, and patching and putting things together. But ultimately, the council back, I think it's been about six years ago, tried to fix our buildings and was told no by the taxpayers. So anyone that blames the council for not fixing the buildings, there's a problem because the town, taxpayers of Enfield did not allow us the money to fix the buildings. And as everyone knows, you don't get very far without money. Um, on this uh, senior center, I, I'm glad to see everyone come out here. And um, I hope this dialogue keeps going. And, you know, give it a chance. The two, Mary and Jason, will work out. We got to give the chance on the Saturday hours. It may be wonderful. And it also may be the biggest bust we did. But time will tell, and you got to give it a couple months, and you got, you got to give this new organization uh, of services a try. And if it doesn't work, I would expect all of you to be back here again and say, hey, this doesn't work. We need to do something. Next, this was totally had nothing to do with staff. This cut in services fell directly on the shoulders of every council person here. And we all voted for it. And everyone should know what they vote for when they say yes or no. And what happened was we were just going to do a one line thing that our budget was X. And our counterparts, for the, for the sake of transparency, wanted every single amendment read into the record. And it was read into the record about the senior cuts. Now, I see this, this part of it as a, a real tragedy. We had two public hearings. One of them was attended by six people, six speakers. That, that's so sad because you guys should be coming out there. It should be like the old days when there were 100 speakers telling us what you wanted. And, 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 but there wasn't. There was only six people there. Everything is, in, everything is posted. Everyone knows what's going on. We had multiple meetings down there that the public is more than welcome to attend to watch and see what's going on, how the budget uh, works. Nobody comes. So next year, when, at, when we have them public hearings, you need to come and voice your opinion. But six people, I believe it was. Um, the next thing that I really get insulted about is when one of the taxpayers say, we vote. I, I take that as a big insult. Because if you don't want me, that's fine. Don't vote for me. But my family will enjoy at least the 10 hours minimum a week that I put in for nothing. Up to 40 hours a week when it gets to be budget season where my family can't see me because we have to make plans. And yes, there were wakes that I had to miss because for me, the important part is this council. I try to make as many meetings as I can. 
And my wife has to go on her own. And there's a lot of things my wife has to go. And I miss family functions because I care about this town. And every single one of these council people do care about this town. And they probably put a minimum of 40, probably to 60 hours a weekend for nothing. So when you say, you know what, we vote. Well, you know something? You give me a vacation. And, 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 and this is, it's, it's pretty sad when, when that has to be said, but it's true. Now, I could just tell you this. You don't want to vote for me next election, that's fine. But just be careful for what you wish for, because it just may come true. Now, you guys, and I say you guys, I talk the public out there. For many years, we've been holding things tight, trying to do it. We don't have the problems Ansonia and the other towns did because we did it a while ago. And we keep trying to do this. This is not we're trying to close a senior center. This is we're trying to save the senior center. If you don't think as many people who say we need to cut the funding to education, don't say we need to cut the funding to the senior center, we have a problem. We have 45,000 people in this town and 300 people that attend the senior center. And let me tell you, for them 300 people, that is the most wonderful thing, and I don't want to take anything away from anyone. But we laid off 17 people and probably didn't fill 35 positions. Them people don't even have a place to go or somewhere to eat anymore other than unemployment. So let's all just put our heads together. Let's not overreact. We have placed new people in charge that really care, who've done wonderful jobs with the, the departments they had, and just give them a little bit of time. And then if it doesn't work out, come see us. Because your voices are very important. But it's not going to change just tonight. We, we have to run this thing through and try it. Because there may be a lot of people that like Saturdays. Smartest thing for anyone to do is just don't go and boycott Saturday. Because then if no one comes, then we have to change the... Uh, the hours but that's where it comes and um, there's one more thing that that's right on the tip of my tongue and and I don't remember I guess I must be getting a senior moment but thank you and you know I I, I did not try to insult anybody or 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 do but if you took it as an insult I apologize but I guess I was insulted too thank you Deputy Mayor Suzak. Joey, you're always a tough act to follow. I guess um, for me, the, the, the understanding of how recreation and senior center go together is that our seniors now, as we've seen, are much more active. And as I sat on leisure and Tom sat with me, we always had to provide things like pickleball. Pickleball can't be provided by the senior center. We had to look to Mary to organize and get us facilities outside. And from my understanding, that's not the only program that had to be um, provided in that fashion. You know, as for Saturday hours, I listened. It's something we all need to do. Our staff went to other communities. Glastonbury offers a similar amount of hours to the town of Enfield and they offer Saturday hours. So that is brought forward to try in Enfield. If we aspire to other communities, then we should look to that. And also, there's a huge diversity in our seniors and their capabilities and what they want. So I see their um, affiliation with recreation to be a way to provide more of what we need. Just spoke first. Uh, make, a motion. make a motion to suspend the rules and move items E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, and M to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Motion Second. made. Seconded by Councilor Falk. Any discussion on the motion to suspend the rules and move the items E through M to miscellaneous? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor by show of hands. Those opposed, any abstentions? We have 10 in favor, zero against. Councilor Bosco. Well, just that everyone walked out, but I just want to go one more thing. You don't use savings for uh, daily operating expenses. So the, the Friends of the Senior Center have money. We should use that money 
when it needs to be used. If you use it for operating expenses, it won't be there when you need it. It's the same as our fund balance. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Falk? <clears throat> Sorry, Councilor. No. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I've served on the town council for a long time, back in the 90s, and uh, went through a lot of budgets. And this was perhaps the most difficult budget that I've ever had to deal with. Uh, last year, we set the budget, and then six months in, the governor cut us by, I don't know, seven or eight million dollars, put us in a big hole. And uh, the town staff was, was great at, at, at coming up with ways to, to, to fill that hole, uh, but basically all it did was kick the can down the road. The problem didn't go away. We still got, had that eight million dollar hole at the beginning of this budget season, and we couldn't ignore it. it we had to deal with it. So uh, the manager had proposed a, a humongous tax increase, 3.5 mil, I think, something in that ballpark. And we were able to cut it down to 1.9. And uh, we, we did that by working together and doing the best that we could with what we had. And uh, as the governor said, you know, when he did this, it's a, a shared pain, I think he called it, shared pain. And every budget in town was affected by what we did here, trying to save money so that we didn't have a 3.5 mil tax increase. And, and, and even at the 1.9, it's still a lot of money, but you heard the problem with the services that got cut. We hit everybody's budget over time, you name it. We, we nickel dime that budget to death so that we could get that mill rate down as low as we could. So uh, it is frustrating, but it's reality, and we dealt with it the best we could. Thank you. Councilor Nunn. So although the governor was definitely to blame for the largest portion of it, our state legislature also cut our budget last year. So um, it's a, the, the enough pain can go around. So why is it so hot in here, Chris? I mean, I spend my whole day outside, and, you know, I'm volunteering to come here, and this happens so often. We put all this money into our buildings with the, with the uh, uh, you know, our uh, heating systems, and, and we're boiling in here. Yeah. I, I'm besides to the myself tonight. You're singing to the choir. I came in earlier. It was cool, so we put the signs that keep the doors closed. Then we walk back in. It's like a, a, a sauna. So we'll... It's we'll, actually cooler in a high hallway. Well, this is, a, this is a wellness program. Wow. Yeah, but, but right, we'll, we can. Well. Yeah, so we'll we'll <laughs> ask Public Works tomorrow to take a Thank peek. You, but please that do. was throughout the building. There were different areas. You were downstairs. You wouldn't think, and it was a yeah. like a steam down there. They've right. got fans on, so we'll look into it. Right, Thank so you. It's, 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 we're gonna, but I'm with you. Else have any comments? <laughs> want to move this forward? I mean, we're at nine o'clock already. Um, I just want to end real quick on a very positive note. On graduation, again, a lot of folks, again, people hear about, you know, moving to town and all this stuff. If you were at that graduation, I don't care who you are, the energy in that crowd, the parents, the kids, there is something going on in this town, and it's good. And I'm so tired of hearing all these people come up and say oh, how negative they are, and this happens, that happens. Well, you know what? Go to some of these events where these kids are competing. I'll tell you right now, you'll be very proud of them. Because I can tell you that night, the energy was fantastic. The parents were into it. The grandparents were into it. Their brothers, their sisters. It was a great night. And the kids, of course, were the star, and that's the way it's supposed to be. I also, in closing, want to thank all the folks from uh, SafeGrad who, again, volunteer their time, stayed up all night long, making sure our kids are safe. So, again, all the good things that we just, we just don't seem to talk about that go on every single day. So moving on. Um, uh, item, item nine, uh, town manager report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. A couple of uh, it, uh, matters to report on, and I would just echo your sentiments. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for five weeks, uh, being your acting town manager, and it has been amazing. It has been challenging, but it has been gratifying. And I can tell you firsthand, you have incredible people that live in this town, and you have incredible people who work for this town. It is a great place to live and work, and I think there is going to be a lot of exciting developments going forward uh, in the community, and I echo what you've said. I think sometimes when, obviously, people are upset, they come out more than when they're happy, especially in the summer. But I'll commend all of the seniors that were here this evening. They feel very passionately about it. It's hot in here, as Mr. Arventelli said, but they talk to you with civility, with respect, and you returned it. And that's what democracy is all about. I would just echo with what um, 
Councillor Arventelli said about invitations. You know, I really can't compel people to invite us to events, but I would say this in the same matter that the mayor did about how exciting and the enthusiasm and the spirit at the high school. Well, an event at the train station would have been nice for us to attend. I would have liked to have gone because we're working hard on that. And I had gone to Windsor Locks to meet with Chris Kervick. And it would have been exciting to see the end result. You read now about the ridership, 10,000 people a day, and it would give us something to look forward to. So from that perspective, I would ask people to try to consider and, and to include us. And likewise with the veterans um, ceremony, I just think as Liz told us how beautiful it was, I would have liked to have been there on behalf of your town and let those veterans know that we care about them and that we didn't come because we, we didn't want to where we were too busy we didn't know about it and I'm not casting aspersions but I know that you'll talk to your counterparts and I think for town events like that where we can celebrate our veterans and celebrate our community please invite us all it makes it richer the community sees everybody there as working hand in hand and I think that's what we all aspire to do um, two reports on the South River Street Bridge we're going to have a community meeting next week um, because there's been a lot of inquiries public works uh, and engineering has sent mailers and they've talked to people but i'm getting a lot of feedback we're talking to residents and i think we need to have a meeting so that the staff can address their concerns i'll give you a quick update that i think the report of our engineer on the bridge it was supposed to be in maybe this evening perhaps tomorrow we'll look at what the re recommendation is we'll see what the cost estimates are uh, i have identified some funding as i told you previously and i know people aren't happy with the fact it may you know have to be pushed to the fall if we can move it up we will but we'll try to make sure that their life and the services and the quality of their life life is maintained there. I met with the fire department last week, Chief um, Billy Preventure, uh, with Public Works to make sure that public safety vehicles and all of those concerns are addressed, and they are, uh, and we'll continue to do the outreach. But residents should know they'll be being contacted for a meeting next week here in the town hall to address their concerns. Um, I would just like to say, too, I think sometimes it's in the agenda and people don't really understand it or stay up to watch the end. So I'll report that we have two items on tonight we talked about uh, at the last meeting, and it's a fulfillment that the council wanted to do in regard to the cl cleaning of Henry Barnard. So there's a resolution on for $20,000 to Public Works for additional cleaning staff to make sure the schools are clean by the time we go back, and another $20,000 that you would want it uh, for the outside consulting to make sure we can address those concerns. So that's on for ACT. Action. And also, the position that I'm filling for the Environmental Health and Safety Officer, which we talked about, um, Public Works and Steve Belinda did a, a real good job to get that done, to make the changes I wanted. So this person is also directly responsible for our buildings and also will look at broader safety uh, for the town uh, away. And that's on for tonight, and then we can advertise it and hopefully fill that position. So we are getting things done. We talked about that from the last meeting, and that, that was the funding that was coming from the Board of Ed. I I'm not going to get into the weeds on the check or where the money. That is the money that the Board of Ed, the $100,000 that they had said was coming to us. John Wilcox is here when those items uh, come up. But suffice it to say, he has assured me that that, with the year-end adjustment, he's talked to the Board of Education, that they would have that money uh, additionally at the end of the year, 100000 And then we are taking it basically from contingency tonight. But when the books are balanced and the money to the Board of Ed in the town is equated, we will be receiving that $100,000. Also, there was talk we had done a transfer, and I was asked about, well, um, you know, we did an IT transfer, which does joint technology with the Board of Ed, and it was for exactly $100,000, and that was to go from uh, purchase to leasing. I talked to um, Mr. Russell this morning and said, look, it, there's no connectivity between those two issues. And he said, not to his knowledge, absolutely not, that he's been working on that for about a year and a half, and that he had proposed it during the budget before any of this surplus from the board was forthcoming. So I, I believe that it's a clean, separate uh, transaction for the two, and you should have confidence in, in knowing that that money is separate and apart from that uh, other line on it at the last meeting. Um, and that's all I have. Question? Yeah. <clears throat> on the... Uh, South River Street Bridge, um, I believe uh, that there is like $5 million in a federal grant that was supposed to put in a bike path along the brook and replace that bridge as part of the $5 million in the federal grant. So the bridge, the bridge I, replacement is slated, and we do have a grant, and that's slated for 2021. This is what we're going to do before then to get it reopened and where we're, how we're going to pay for it. 
until 2021. So the so money is So whatever you do temporarily, then you're going to get rid of when you replace the whole bridge. Well, that's why we want to be very cautious about we don't want to, as they say, throw good money after bad. Uh -huh. We want to address it and restore the bridge for use by residents within uh, the realm of having funds to do it and not spend so much that we are throwing money away because it's going to be ripped down in 2021 uh, altogether. So we're trying to mesh it so it's temporary, but it, 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 it makes sense to spend the money for the next couple of years to have it reopened. Well, get, getting back to the $5 million uh, to get the grant because it exceeds six hundred or $700,000, which is our limit, we have to go to referendum in order to authorize spending that. I, I assume you're aware of that because uh, Peter Brighton was working on that and it came up many times in the Econ Economic Development Commission meetings. The fact that, that was coming through and the only way that we could do this is a referendum question authorizing, even though it's federally funded, it comes out of our budget first and then we get reimbursed. So there have to be a referendum and is there, is that in the works? Uh, well, you know, we have to have public hearings. I'll say that. I'll say this: advertising and all that stuff for, for a referendum question. I don't have all the answers, and it's hot. But I'll tell you, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah, well, no, you don't have too no. long. They're, 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 they're looking has to be at done it. Done by like September yeah. or something. Yeah, um, like we don't. Need, you know, I can't answer all the yeah. specifics. They're aware of it. They know what the grant uh, share is. Mr. Wilcox is aware, and Public Works is aware, and they seem in all my discussions with them, they were confident. But you're right, Peter. People think sometimes there's grant money, but there is still. It can be a mechanism that there's a referendum mm -hmm. on a lot. Of different projects, it isn't just a fait accompli because we have a 80-20 grant from the state. Yep. Much like the school, we haven't, you know, a, a reimbursement we're going to hear about later. But we still have to go to referendum to get our share authorized. So they understand that. I just don't want it to get lost. It's no. important. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. No. So, so if we're getting the grant in uh, 2021, can we do the work now and get the grant money back in 2021 and just replace the bridge with the money we're going to have to? come up with anyway and then wait for the state money in 2021 can that be done uh, I asked the DPW, they, they, and I don't want to get into detail, Mr. Bilmes is on vacation, but he can elaborate further. We can put it on in August, but they're thinking because of the way it's worded and what Peter has said, no, ah, they're um, separate. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We looked at that too. People have talked about temporary bridges like bridge over river Kwai to do it, but there's still, we have to go through the process of the DOT. They have to look at it, give approval. So it's not easy and people do have good ideas and we, we do listen and, and uh, try to run them to ground, but a lot of them just under the structure when you're dealing with the state, nothing seems to be quick. Councilor Denny. Today I mentioned uh, to uh, some of the engineering department and there's a company, I thought maybe the Army National Guard had one still in the state and they're looking into it, but a Bailey Bridge, which is a temporary and it's only 20, about 26 feet. So it's, and, and it's not something you need a crane with, you can assemble this Bailey Bridge uh, by hand and just put it over to span then so uh, they're looking into it and there's a company in worcester that has one so i don't know what the cost is and uh, whatever but they're gonna they're gonna play with it thank you uh town, item 10 town attorney report maria good evening there's no formal report tonight we, we made mark say some stuff last meeting <laughs> that's okay, that's okay though. <laughs> thank you all right, moving on to item 11, a report of special committees. Councilor Muller. Quick joint facilities update. The Henry Barnard roof project has been submitted to the state and is pending review. Once approved, the project will go out to bid. Construction is estimated to take about two weeks. So, so again, be clear, in July, we expect to start the roof. In July, we expect to start Some the roof. comments are made, yep. but we're actually addressing the issue through the budget. Right, the yep. building envelope. All right. The only thing I will add on, we had a we had a meeting of the governance, and we're talking. We're hoping to have, we had a good meeting with Gina and uh, Councillor Scala and Councillor Muller. We're hoping to have a a suppository, for lack of a better word, for policies where we can have one stop shopping of all policies. So we finally get everything in writing, get it to an easy location, so folks can see exactly what we say we're going to do, and it's in writing. And we also have some pretty good ideas with uh, our finance director to start managing the budget. You know, on a monthly basis. What I mean by that is making sure expenditures, what's happening with CIP, and some of the other things going on. So again, we really take it like a mini board of finance where we you know, report back to the council. So we had a good meeting. We're meeting every month. Councillor Bosco. Um, yeah, July uh, 12th. Just for anyone that wants to have any input on the Mullen Road uh, intersection with Steel at two o'clock, 
uh, July 12th. We're going to have a meeting, and uh, we arranged it. So if anyone wants to speak, normally uh, the, the, the public meetings, uh, there's no public input, but this time we, we moved it. So if you have a concern about Mullen and Steele, uh, you're more than welcome to come down and speak your piece, and then we'll try to figure out what we're going to do. Thank you. Yeah, here at the town hall. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item 12, old business items A, 1 through 2, appointments for the town council. We have none on page 1. Appointments through 3 through 16 on page 2, we have none. On page 3, appointments 17 through 20, again, we have none. Moving on to uh, old business item B, appointments by the town manager, items 1 through 9, none for the t on page 3. Items 10 through 15 for the town manager. Any appointments? No. Item C, to resolution discussion on Info High Re Renovation Committee is still on the table, remains stable. Item 13, new business, A, C, A, consent agenda, we have none. Item B, appointments by the town council, we have none. Item C, appointments by the town manager, we have none. Item D, appointments by, for P and Z commission appointed, again, council approved, we have none. Item 14, items for discussion. Item A, consent agenda, again, we have none. Item B, appointments town council, we have none. Item C, appointments town manager, assuming the answer is we have none. Assuming silence means that you're right. Item D, P and Z, a commission appointed, again, we have none. And now we move on to item 15, miscellaneous, where items E through M have been moved prior by the council. First uh, amendment or for discussion, item E. Mr. Mayor. Yep. Uh, that can remain on the table, and I can address it under item F. Okay, item E will remain on the table. Do we have to make a motion to move it back to the table? Well, right. I, don't, I don't think you removed it, did they? No, no so, so it stays. Can, right. So, Suzanne, just curious, next next week it will still be under item, or next meeting will Month. be item discussion. New business, got it. Okay, thank you. I want to make sure we, we dot our I's. So uh, E will be at new business next meeting. Item F. Discussion resolution authorizing the town manager to amend and accept, amend and access, access and a access, excuse me, and confidentiality confidentiality agreement with Yankee Gas Company. I'll say it right one of these times. Resolution authorizing the acting town manager to sign an amendment to access to access <coughs> to an access and confidential agreement with Yankee Gas Company and Connecticut Light and Power each doing business on Eversource Energy. Resolved that the acting town manager, Christopher W. Bronson, is authorized to sign an amendment to an access and confidential agreement. Got it right? I should stop there, right? Yeah. Drafted on the behalf of the town by attorney Andrew Davis of Shipman and Goodman in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield and Yankee Gas Service Company and Connecticut Lane Power Company, each doing business as Eversource Energy. Submitted on June 28, 2018 by the town manager's office. So moved. By Councilor Known. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Chris. Yes, basically, uh, the prior item w was tabled. We had a discussion this morning um, with our counterparts with the state and the federal government in regard to the train station, where we're at, and we'll have an update in August, but it, it was premature at this point. They wanted some documentation that uh, John and Mike Cirillo are forwarding to them in regard to invoices, in regard to the last item, so they asked that we push that. Uh, in regard to this item, basically, uh, we are having to, if we want to move forward at our site down there, just a very quick overview, the Eversource property is yep. there so we have entered into and we've had state grant money to do it an access agreement with Eversource there's confidentiality so we can't discuss what really has gone on but they've done a lot of testing uh, circumstances arose that necessitated them to get a longer period of time to conclude the phase two testing environmental testing so the anticipated uh, date would be if we uh, sign this we're confident Eversource will and that hopefully by the end of August they'll conclude all of the testing and we'll have results back in then we'll be in a position to see how we're going to proceed and we'll have another call with both the state and the federal government in regard to moving the project forward so that's why the first one isn't on and that's why the second one is okay. any questions yes uh, Councilor Denny well, I'm just I'm just nervous about this whole thing because there's contamination there correct and, and that's what I'm nervous about. Yeah, there, well, there's a confidentiality and, and this, agreement and because... And that's what this is about, this yes. confidentiality right. agreement. Right, we and can't talk about status of it, but this is to conclude that and make a report uh, for the end of August. Okay, and there's... There's nothing else I can say. That's all you can tell me? Right. 
Is there, can you tell me if there's if there would be money like there would be on Prospect Street for Brownfield Grant? To clean? Well, there is the money we're using for this is Brownfield money, so that is all part of the equation. That's why we'll have a fuller report for you in August. All right, I and can also sleep easier. Uh, a bit of good news too, which ties into that. We have hired Lori Witten. Uh, in our planning department. She comes with great credentials and she will be here at the August meeting for us to introduce her. And she is very excited about that project and she will be then proceeding to talk to staff, meet with our commission members and the community and she will be a vital part of that discussion. Okay. Very good, thank you. All set? Good. Yeah. Councilor So just being said that this property, uh, the old power plant across, there's a crucial piece of property for river redevelopment too, which is, um, it's exciting that we're this far. We were many, many uh, uh, years ago far, far away from even uh, being uh, let on the site for testing. So um, in all the initial reports for the years that I've, uh, I've been serving have been, yes, there is contamination, but it's not Love Canal type of, con of uh, contamination. And it probably isn't, and it's gonna be a reasonable um, a piece of property that just needs to be uh, it needs to be fixed. Um, it's an eyesore. It's a um, it's a beautiful area to begin with, right next to our boat launch, like uh, down there. And um, I'm very excited to be this far now, and, and actually had been gained access. And what I can't say without the lawyer whacking me is that, from all the information I've gleaned and all the meetings and discussions I've had so far, I'm optimistic about the project. So I'll leave you with that. Well said. Well, well said. <laughs> Anyone else have any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Please. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzette. Really? Four. Councillor Engeyer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis has left the meeting. So there's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item G under miscellaneous, discussion resolution for a transfer of funds from Public Works Building and Grounds of $40,000. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter. The following transfers hereby made from account 10800092-584000, unallocated charges contingency of 40002 account 10, 103-543-100, Buildings and grounds, building maintenance of 20,000, account 103-00345-513-000, custodial service attempt seasonal of 20,000, certification, I hereby certify the above funds are available on July 1, 2018 by our Director of Finance, John Wilcox, approved by Town Manager Chris Bronson on 6 So moved. By Councilor Falk, Second. seconded by Councilor Crisati. And Chris, I know this is sort of I think we know, but if you want to give real quick, this is what you brought up last meeting? Right, this is what yep. I brought up in my report, that this is really the $20,000 for the Public Works to address the school cleaning for their seasonal help and the $20,000 for outside assistance in that endeavor. And I want to correct the record so that the clerk for our minutes next time will, re will reflect that I'm, I'm addressing Councillor Arnone. Uh, if I had said uh, Councillor Arventelli, I, he was an old he, dear he friend of the family who was an attorney, and he was a nice yeah. man. So by the way, I, I say it with okay. all due affection. Yeah. Yeah, just, just don't, just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any discussion on the again? This is what we talked about last meeting. Again, addressing this, not only Henry Barnard, but also all our elementary schools. Correct. Again, so this is in joint uh, collaboration with the, with the Board of Education. Roll call, please. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item, again, under miscellaneous item H, discussion resolution setting a public hearing for the proposed appropriation of 84373294 to expand and renovate the JFK Middle School and to authorize the issuance of bonds. Uh, whereas in order to create a more efficient and cost-effective education environment for the students of Enfield, the Town Council is proposing the expansion and renovation of John F. Kennedy Middle School to like new the pro under the under the parentheses the project. And whereas the Town Council has proposed a funding of 84 million. 373-294 for the project, and whereas no more than 27 million of the project would be funded by the issuance of bonds, notes, and temporary notes, and whereas the town council would like the public's input on the project, 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Enfield Town Council does hereby schedule a public hearing be held on September 4, 2018 at 6.30 in the Enfield Town Hall Chamber, Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, in order to, to allow public comment on a proposed appropriation 84 million 373 294 for the reconstruction and renovation of the john f kennedy school and to authorize the issuance of bonds notes or temporary notes in an amount not to exceed 27 million the balance funded by grants and other available funds prepared on june 28 2018 by the town manager's office so so motion by councillor falk second by councillor unknown any discussion on a resolution we have our consultant here so he's been sitting all night we got to ask him a question he's he's uh <laughs> September 4th, 2018, is that when the public hearing? Correct. So I, I will open the floor to you, so if you have anything you want to, I know you're here three weeks ago? Three? Uh, or, a few weeks ago, yeah. So if I don't know if there's anything you want, I know there's a number of questions that night, of anything you want to address or? The numbers haven't changed, it's right. still, it's, it's all still the same. Uh, presentation hasn't changed, layout hasn't changed. This is just to, uh, to set the hearing for September 4th. Could you just briefly go over the um, process for the grant process and the timelines that the committee and you had to meet um, in order to get the uh, uh, state grant in? Sure. Briefly. Yeah. So you the uh, so the grant was submitted um, last week, uh, last Thursday, I believe. I forget the date. The twenty seventh, I believe, June twenty seventh. Uh, the deadline was June thirtieth. We do get an extension to file the uh, local funding, uh, which is your referendum, uh, in November. So the process can start prior to June 30th uh, or July 1st uh, and go through November. And then should the referendum pass, we forward the, uh, uh, the voting information on to the state and then they will complete the rest of the application uh, and get us hopefully onto the priority list for December 15th. So can you tell us a percent of grant we're getting and what the uh, taxpayer will actually in the end after the bond uh, uh, be responsible for? Sure. What so, will? so right now, uh, again, our total grant is, total project cost is 84,373,294. Uh, our reimbursement, the, the Enfield reimbursement rate is 29.29%. So of that 84 million, uh, uh, the town's bonding would be $23,914,227. However, uh, there are some ineligible costs that uh, get included uh, or tacked on to that $23 million number. So right now we're projecting about 27.2 million. Uh, at the end of the day, when the project is closed out from the state, um, that, will, that should be about the final number uh, that the taxpayers will have to bear for the JFK project. 27, 27 million, million for an $84 right. million dollar the project. Right, correct. The referendum, and again, speaking to uh, the grant process, it is a reimbursement process, so you have to authorize the full $84 million, uh, and you have to over-authorize your local share to make sure that you have your costs covered. That's not to commit to spending all that. It's just giving you the leeway to be able to do so on the state side, and then once all of our receivables are in uh, at the end of the project, we're again, we're anticipating 27.2 million. Uh, thank you too for the work you've done. You're our advocate for the town of Enfield between the, the architects and in, in, in us. So you've uh, done a tremendous job. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Yes, last time Gina had a really good question. She's not here today, but the answer is right now there's currently 70 teaching stations and in the new building there's 75 and this is critical that they're appropriately sized and appropriately located teaching stations. An extreme amount of dedication has been done through the finance, through the architect, with everybody to make sure that what we're providing is appropriate and efficient and the building is utilized to the maximum that what it can be and this is below what it would cost to band-aid it over the next what at our rate it would take us decades and i know and i'm going to say like tom says when this referendum passes and we're working on the roofs we and Chris has also, as he's championed this, he's been championing the, yes, the yes. grant for the Henry Barnard roof sections as well. It's a very hardworking committee that, work, that meets all the time and works really hard. Again, I'll, again, I'll give you credit because your presentation was professional. And that was my beef last, last with the last group. So I, your folks did a good job. 
I gotta be honest, the, the cost still scares me a little bit, because especially with a contingency. So I'm gonna assume that 10 million that you have in contingency, we're gonna have, you're not gonna spend all that. Uh, that's, I'm gonna to talk to myself and say, that's how I can vision approve, going for this, because that, that 10 million is gonna be there for me, all right? There is, there is and, contingencies and I, built into no this, matter right? what, No matter what, that's a huge contingency for me. I, again, I'm not in a construction business, but I know in my line of work, we can never get away with that. So I get it, right? and that's my, my concern, but having said that, it's a very professional presentation. I appreciate the, the, all the work that you've done with the committee. I just have two questions. And sure. then a question for the committee. A, are we replacing all three boilers with this plan? Or what are we doing? Are we having one boiler? Because you know we have three boilers that don't work right now in a building. Correct. And then and B, estimated how long it's going to take to finish the project. If it gets approved on November, then just if, do we have an estimated timeline? So the first question, the, the boilers, uh, this, this grant is going in as a renovate as new. So everything in the building will be brought up to a 20-year life cycle. Okay. Uh, in terms of if there's going to be three boilers or two boilers or one boiler, Don't know. that's right. still not determined yet. But they'll be replaced. They All absolutely, right. every, every system in the building will be replaced with a 20 year lifespan right. at a minimum. Yep. Um, as far as uh, scheduling, we haven't really gotten into that yet either. Uh, just because, again, we nailed down the, uh, uh, the new layout and then we'd have to work through phasing because the building is going to remain occupied which does mean that it's going to it's going to take it's going to extend the construction process a little bit longer than it would be a conventional new building so uh, to comment on the duration now i, I can't do that okay no fair, fair. And, I, and this is more of a question for the committee and actually for jonathan i want us at the september meeting to have an estimated debt service i want us to be completely upfront with people so we're, again everyone knows exactly what they're voting for there's none of this confusion going into the voters box I want us to be upfront because you know, and so everyone knows what our debts are and how important it is at that point. You also be able to report whether our our bond rating got adjusted or not. Because I know you folks met with them, and I'll leave it at that. So those are some big points between now and November, September. And my only other suggestion, just a suggestion from what I've heard from folks, we have a plan for the rest of the buildings in town. I know it's not official. I know that the committee's working on it. They meet every week. Again, a high level summary of what we may or may not do with those buildings, in my opinion, is going to help folks know that we have a plan not just for JFK <clears throat> but what we're going to do for the remaining 28 buildings that we have in town or so and I'm not, so I think that's key to help folks understand it. again we're not going to keep coming out every year for another building so I think that's not nor it's not a suggestion to you but for the committee I know I've talked to Deputy Mayor Suzak about that we really need to have something in writing so folks understand we have a plan for and again it's not going to be etched in stone I understand it's got to go through the committee and everything else and then public hearings but to have something, hey, we're working on trying to limit our real estate in town. And so I think that's, for me, important. I think, to your point, it could pass. So that's just my, so again, thank you very much. I think you folks did a great job on this thing. Great. Anyone thank else have any questions? Deputy Mayor Suzak. I'm going to attempt to answer some of your questions so that everybody in the audience gets to, to hear everything. I mean, also with having a contingency, it also has 4% escalation. And our original estimate when we put out the RFP, RFQ was 2021. As I shared with the committee, I say to people, construction's not like opening an umbrella. You got a lot of work ahead of time and you got a lot of work once you, you break ground. So it is very important that we do that. Um, so the plan. We do have, we have started a plan on yeah. the roofs. The Henry Barnard roof will be the first of our sample. And I know we've put a lot of pressure under everybody and we're putting pressure on the state to please review this so that we can get these two sections done. Our plan is into September. We are going to look for our next opportunity to improve ourselves and find the next two sections of roofing. And we're thinking we're gonna find that at the Hazardville Memorial. And we know we have a um, couple of sections that need improvement at the Henry Barnard School. So our hope is that within the budget and the sinking fund that we will be doing sections of the Henry Barnard roof and sections of the Hazville Memorial roof. In the meantime, we've directed staff to please find the turnover dates of all the school buildings because we're going to start with school buildings because they've been consolidated and we will have the dates that they were turned over. Hopefully we're not too far over our 20 year. They have to be 20 years since we've done the last roofing. It looks like we're well into on some of them, the 30 year mark. So we're there on that. 
We always get our 71% reimbursement. We will continue to do that on a building by building basis. We have the Eli Whitney, the Parkman, and uh, the uh, Crandall. And I'm sure if we maintain Stowe, that Stowe would have to go into this, this plan as well. Once we get this underway, I hate to tell you, but it's Windows Next in the state does reimburse for that. So I would like to work fully on building envelope. We've looked at that for a long time. Water infiltration will kill a building. So with that being said, we're doing that. We're also in September gonna go out with, there was in the budget, $100,000 to look at um, the consolidation of our town facilities. Whether we consolidate them into one building or they tell us to sell our big buildings and stay in our small buildings, I don't have a crystal ball on that, but I do know at this point we've had, you know, Matt Coppler's dream, we've had Brian's dream, and we have had a building analysis. So with those three reports, we'll be looking out for professional. And right now we're looking for a, again, owner rep to help us on the way. And if Joe and Tom want to add anything, and Bob's our new person who's coming to our meetings, and we welcome him. My dream is to sell them, but I won't. You know what my dream? All right. First That's of all, good. thank you. Thank you very much. Again, I know your cool. folks. Uh, like I said, very professional presentation, and uh, thank you for everything you've helped out at Henry Barner as well. You're welcome. Thank you very much for hanging in there in a hot night. Thanks, Chris. No yeah. problem. Uh, hearing no other discussion, roll call, please. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. There's nine in favor and against. Thank you. Appreciate no it. Extensions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Item I, discussion resolution under miscellaneous resolution to amend the facilities assistant job description. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter. Danfield Town Council does hereby amend the job description in the position of facilities assistant. Submitted on July 2nd, 2018. Submitted by Don Homer Boothier, a director of social services. By Councilor Muller. Seconded by Councilor Grisotti. Hey, Don, welcome. Again, thank you for hanging. Sure. You got a sweater on. I, mean. I just want to let you know it's 82 degrees. I just checked for Councilor Arnone as I walked up on. here. And you got a sweater on. Yes, well, you know. But look at him. Suits. <laughs> yeah. Feel bad. Feel yeah. bad for you all. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I just as a preamble, I'd like to thank Don for coming. This is part of a, a real thoughtful, uh, well planned reorg that she has um, been working on. She's been incredible uh, assisting me in understanding social services, all of the different programs. She has been there every time I've called her. We have one-on-one -on -one meetings. She sends me updates. She's an exceptional director. And I would like to say this, that you know when a general gives a commander an order, take the hill, and they take the hill, and you know there obviously are casualties. You don't blame the commander, you blame the general. Right. So I would just like to say in regard to communication and other matters, that's not the responsibility. And she was given a task to, to do when she did it. I've talked to her. She's been incredible helping us in the transition with Jay and with Mary. And I thank her for that, and I appreciate her, and I think she's an asset to the community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. So I have a trifecta here for job specs, so we'll do one at a time if you have so questions. So any questions on this job for Don? Or you want to give a little background, Don, real quick? Sure. So we, we've been working on since I got here, and I think it was one of the first conversations I had both with Councilor Arnone and Councilor Denny, is that DSS was kind of really spread out and all over the board. So we've worked with our program managers um, over the last year and a half or so, uh, the deputy director and I, to kind of come up with a plan that makes more sense both to the staff and we hope to the uh, people that we serve in the town. So we've reorganized internally. So we have an early care and education um, bucket, basically a division, youth and family services, and adult and community services. So the job specs, as you know, haven't been um, really reviewed since like 1999, almost all of them. So we're going through literally um, with Steve um, and the HR staff one at a time. And so we accept, we expect that you will see lots of them coming. But this was basically us trying to update the of responsibilities because things have changed in the last 20 years, making sure that the requirements are industry standard with our peers and other municipalities, and then kind of just kind of cleaning up a whole bunch of stuff. So that's where we ended up. This facilities assistant job spec was uh, one that we had at the senior center. When we did a reorganization in the um, kitchen at the child development center, we felt that we could 
um, kind of restructured where the kitchen staff worked and still get the highest quality out for the kids for the meals by kind of reorganizing um, the cooks into a part-time cook and a facilities assistant. So this is somebody that helps prep cook and helps deliver all those meals to those 250 kids that we get to serve every day. So that's kind of how we worked it out. Cool. Any questions for Don? Again, I, I mean, I agree. I think it's, it's, I don't know, it's in its fall of the council that we don't that show all the programs that you folks are involved in. All the, I mean, there's so many programs that we do for people, both from zero, age one, excuse me, age one, all the way to age 100. Yep. And uh, I think that's something we, as a council, we need to figure out. Because yep. I think there's so many programs that are out there that people are using, and people don't realize that we provide, you know, that really do help a lot of people. I mean, and it's all ages, so yep. from seniors to, to, the, to the infants. And I think, you know, again, I, I, again, I think the, I know it's different here, but the innovative program trying to prevent homelessness. Yep. Hopefully you'll give us an update. We're waiting. The application went in. All right. We're supposed to hear relatively soon. So I hope to really get good news on that. All right. And again, I think it's, and I've heard from other, I've actually heard from other towns how, again, appreciate how innovative we're trying to be. They were good. They're going to be great partners in the work. So, so thank you. Any other questions or on the, no? Thank you, Don. Sure. Do you want me to just stay for the other yeah, two? Yeah, we'll just stay for the okay. next one. Uh, roll call, please. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Fall. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungayer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item J under miscellaneous. Discussion resolution, resolution amending the cook job description. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby amend the job description for the following position of cook. Date submitted on 7 2 2018 by Don Homer Boothier, Director of Social Services. By Councillor Muller. Second. By Councillor Known. Any, Don, any um, kind of quick? I think this is basically the same thing. It's just a little bit of cleanup here. Right. Um, one of the things we did change is this is a program that Enfield runs seven days a week. It's for the Congregate Meal Program. We run at Mark Twain with uh, CRT food during the week. We cook our meals at Mark Twain on the weekend, and anybody who's disabled or over 60 can come to those Congregate Meal Programs. That's no community does a seven seven day a week program so that's obviously serving seniors and disabled folks right. in a very a very um, consistent way here one of the things that happens in this program is um, when CRT can't show up because it's a snow day um, it, that's basically an essential position because we're a subcontract by the housing authority to provide the meals during the week so the way it is now uh, somebody can stay home if it's a snow day and I have to put a sub in there so this makes this position essential which is basically Monday through Friday if that's your job you need to come to work so we can figure those things out so um, it's a very small change but I think it's going to help us out um, with no, we're forward. not charging for those meals correct pardon are we charging for those meals? so CRT gets a grant yeah. from the North Central Area Agency on Aging for the Monday through Fridays donations are accepted um, on the meals that people really, really like, sometimes we get a dollar. The cost of the meals are around 745 And so it, it supplements a little bit of the cost to CRT. On the weekends, we basically run with the money we get from grants and the housing authority um, for the weekend, and donations are accepted again huh. for those. Very but cool. nobody, every, anybody can eat free that needs to. Uh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. That's great. This, this is actually the... Councilor uh... no, Denny, go ahead. This is, all, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. This is also the, in the... Uh, senior center itself i mean in mark twain is where to we have actually two congregate meal programs here we right. do about 60 people monday through friday at the yeah. senior center in mark twain we do about 30 during the week and then about 35 each day of the weekends right. yep again just another great program that we brought i mean it's just amazing that this stuff goes on all the time and people don't realize yeah that. we'll give socialization in meals so i yeah. think it's a it's an important piece of what you all do yep again i agree it's an, another great program uh any other questions Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Fall. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungayer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item K under miscellaneous, a resolution amending the teacher job description for the Child Development Center. Resolved in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does by does hereby amend the job description for the following position of teacher. Date submitted on 6-21-2018 by Don Homer Boothier, Director of Social Services. By Councillor Muller. Second. Second by Councillor Arnone. 
Don, again, anything on this one? Well, I think for this one, the big change is uh, moving more toward the national accreditation standards because our centers, all our programs that can be nationally accredited are nationally accredited. And so this reflects a change not just to teaching kids like letters and colors, but social emotional skills and prevention skills and other things. We're really starting with the really young ones and really aligning with the school district, which I think is, is going to make a much uh, better program. So that's all this is. It's, a, again, a little cleanup of what our expectations are uh, 20 years later and uh, what the national standards are. Well, again, uh, thank you for hanging in there on a very sure. hot night. Appreciate it. Any questions for Don? Roll call, please. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falls. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungar. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Crisotti. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no Thanks. abstentions. Thank you, Don. Appreciate it. Item L, discussion resolution, author, uh, resolution amending the environmental health and safety manager job description. Resolved in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby amend the job description for the position of our environmental health and safety manager. Submitted on June 25th, 2018 by Steve Belinda, Director of Human Resources. So moved. Mm -hmm. By Councilor Anone, okay. seconded by Councilor Falk. Any discussion or, or Chris, real Just quick? Just to be clear, it is not a new position. It is merely a new job description to include the responsibilities I outlined earlier. It is part-time, non-union. It was budgeted, and it will be within that budget with expanded responsibility. And again, direct response from working with the Board of Education and the issues at the school. Correct. To have an actual person responsible for the for the schools, their safety, their cleanliness, and town buildings. And also, this individual is going to do more in helping to assist other directors in doing incident and investigation reports when there are on-the-job injuries, uh, seeking to uh, ensure that they don't occur again in is the it, future. Is it possible? And I, I know it's not my jurisdiction, so I don't want to speak for anyone in the Public Safety Committee. Can they get reports? once this gets up and running on how the progress that we're making or whatever we're doing? Certainly. I mean, I, I don't want to speak for those folks, but it actually be a good idea to get some updates on what they're finding and what we're doing to clean up. Yep. So again, so we minimize that misinformation that went out there? Public public, I'm sorry, public works. I apologize, man, public works. All right, we can incorporate yeah. that. Yeah. I, was I was thinking public works, sorry. Yeah. I was close, I had public, public in there, I had public. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Suzak. We actually get updates from the DPW at facilities because we have oh. BOE people there and we have um, town council there. So all along we have been getting updates from um, Greg Gabinell on, you know, the work that's being done for the cleanup and updates and, you know, some of the trials and tribulations that they have of, of the cleaning and, you know, how, you know, we need to maybe run a, a little leaner machine, so to speak. Good. Then cleaner, did you say cleaner machine? Or leaner. leaner, oh, leaner. It'd be, it'd be great I mean, if we get these reports ready. I apologize, but if we can get maybe a copy, it would be nice. To, I would like to see yeah. that. Yeah. No further discussion. Roll call, please. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Fall. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungayer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. It's nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Item, end, item M, under, discussion, under miscellaneous discussion resolution authorizing the acting town mayor to enter an agreement with Petty Care Services, LLC. Resolved that Chris, Christopher W. Bronson, acting town manager, is empowered to ex execute and deliver in the name and behalf of this, of this municipality an agreement with Petty Care Services, LLC, subject to the review of the town attorney prepared by the town manager's office on June 28, 2018. So moved. By Second. Councilor Marley, seconded by Councilor Unknown. Chris? Just again, as previously stated, this is restoration of a service that uh, was very popular and I think necessary uh, at the senior center, but we're do now doing it in accordance with our, what our insurance carrier recommended and our town attorney in uh, conformity with our town uh, facilities use policy. So we have this in place. Everybody know, knows the responsibilities, and this individual now, we will know, will be insured to protect uh, themselves and us. I mean, great news. I mean, that's we have to we have to manage our, our reliability. So it's very much appreciated by our town attorney. Thank you, Maria. This is, I mean, not that we don't want to provide the service. We just had to make sure that the taxpayers were protected. So I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I know. It's I bad. wish everybody yeah, was still here because this is one of the ones where you can actually fix. And yeah. and we hope that all will get fixed. But this didn't at no uh, no cost to the senior center nor the taxpayer that we're able to bring the service back from. Um, 
from the end of it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm very happy personally to see this because I had received several phone calls myself on this. Uh, and, and this pedicure service has been going on as long as it was the old senior center. That's that's how old this program was. No, we, we did get um, the request. And, and I will say that you were on top of that. You communicated to me for, about a lot of residents that we were able to reach out and also reminded me to get this on and try to do it at the July Thank meeting. You. And I think it probably would have fallen uh, between the cracks, Councilman Arnoli, but for your persistence. And I ask, I, I thank um, Maria and Jason for making it uh, a priority and getting it done out of turn. Yeah, it'll definitely keep my phone from ringing. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Uh, move on to item 16, public communication. Would anyone like to speak for the, before the council at this time? Jack. I, I just assume. I know you shouldn't just assume, so I apologize. About to disappoint me again, but <laughs> the, TV's, the TV's on, Jack. So yeah. you got three minutes. The um, clock's running. There's a, there's a few things um, that I have questions about. The sinking fund. Is this mic on? They can't hear them. They can hear them. Can you mic on, Jack. Right. Sorry. Thanks. Oh, the sinking fund. I uh, did you get my name, Jack Sheridan, Seven Buchanan Road? Um, I think the sinking fund was designed to go around our town charter to circumvent the $550,000. And I've looked on the computer a few times investigating, and, and there are towns that have voted and, and found that to not be legal, uh, that process. So, so I think we should look into that a little further. It certainly looks that way to me. The other thing is, when we talk about 20-year life cycles, and we're talking about boilers on the construction. Commercial boilers are a hundred year life cycle. So I don't know why we're talking about 20 year life cycles. Uh, home heating systems even last more than 20 years generally. Um, and, and we're talking about a containment that holds water. It's just a box, a steel box that holds water or whatever. So. Unless it's leaking, it's not a problem. If you check the pH and do the maintenance on them and make sure they're not acidic, they'll last forever. Um, and the school, the answer to Gina on her question on classrooms, her question was classrooms, not stations. That classroom number is very elusive. I know because I've been trying to find out what it is for 25 years. You'll never find it out. Um, and, and further, the state is supposed to uh, grant money for the school, and the state can't fulfill its obligations now. So how are they gonna fulfill the obligations for this? And by the way, I pay those taxes. It's not like it's free. So the third part of that is, well, I guess the debt service is a, a concern, but the third part is, if it's passed, how much more is my taxes going to go up? And how many more people are you going to displace or cause you to have to raise the mill rate because the property values go down again? So they're all concerns of mine, and I hope that the people that, when they're put to vote, will think of these things. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Hearing none, I declare public communications closed. Any councilor communications? Hearing just, none. Just a note, <clears throat> Fourth of July celebration is coming up next weekend, six, seven, and eight. If you want to have some fun, some free music, stop down on the green. Enjoy yourself, have a good time, thanks. Okay. Item 18, motion to adjourn. Motion. Councilor Bosco. Second. Seconded by Councilor Denny. All those in favor, by show of hands. Aye. Motion adjourned. Good night.